Good evening, and welcome to Big Z Sports' presentation of high school football playoffs. Tonight, the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, Oldman Hospital, DAC Vitamins and Minerals, and TMK Valley Propane presents the Steubenville Big Red versus the Indian Valley Braves in this Division IV Region 15 championship. Tonight's game is also presented by Battle Motors, Parkway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, First National Bank of Denison, Wood Electric, Parkway Quick Lane, and Kime Home Center. Now, let's head to the Hartzler Quality Housing Mobile Studio with Joe Geckler, Travis McClelland, and Shannon Thomas. Week 14 of the high school football season brings us to St. Clairsville High School for Steubenville and Indian Valley. Good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Geckler along with Travis McClellan, Shannon Thomas all night long on the sidelines for Big Z Sports here tonight. A big thanks to our sponsors, DAC Vitamins and Minerals, Altman Hospital, Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, and TMK Valley Propane for our streaming. But we have a big Division Four Region 15 matchup tonight between the 10 and 3. Indian Valley Braves and the 11 and 2 Steubenville Big Red Travis uh, the Indian Valley Braves with a huge win last week against Columbus East. Yeah, or, you know, uh, Bishop Reedy. Yeah, me. Bishop Reedy down in Newark and uh, you know they took that game early and often there and made big plays offensively. Everyone saw the highlight play from Colton Thomas but they ran they hit the home run last week Joe. And it's going to be similar football tonight. They're both going to run the football. They're both going to play sound defense. Both these teams play hard. I can't wait to kick it off. You talked about Colton Thomas. He was 4 of 5, 95 yards, two touchdowns. The uh, the, the one everybody saw, uh, almost 300,000 views on the video. Great job by Shannon Thomas to get that out there for us. And uh, he had 14 carries, 69 yards, four tackles, an interception, and a fumble recovery all on defense. Yeah. Did a little bit of everything for him. Yeah, He's, I think he sold popcorn and programs, too, at the half, Joe. He did it all, and uh, they they're going to need a similar effort tonight, and I think he's an athlete to be able to do that for them. We call him the Swiss Army Knife, and I believe he's just that. And if you look at the other side of this matchup tonight, the Steubenville Big Red, 11-2. Reno Sagosh in his 39th season for the Big Red. Been around a long, long time, and he is the Ohio High School all-time winning as head coach. Yeah, he is, and he's been around forever and, and since, you know, the early 80s, and, and he does what he does, and they're going to run counter gap. They're going to run stretch. The str it's called the Steubenville stretch, Joe. It's called across high school football. They're going to run ISO, and you know what? They play really hard. They play to the echo of the whistle. What people don't talk about is how good Steubenville's offense and defensive line are, and that's going to be the task tonight against the Vaughn Indian Valley defense. They beat Columbus East last week, like I mentioned earlier, but uh, actually Columbus East plays Steubenville, so they beat them 41-22. That was a big win to get them here in the regional championship game. Yeah, big win by them last week. Uh, they led big at the half, and then Columbus East came back there, uh, but uh, you know they're, they're led by their running game. You know, Spencer Ostovich, you know, Kai John Hopkins, they're going to run the football, and uh, the quarterback uh, for them, they're going to they're gonna go after it and athletically, they're really good. They're really twitchy, but it's the offensive line there for them. Yeah, their quarterback, Phaeton Hill, is yeah. something dynamic for the Big Red. It'll be a fun matchup. We're going to head down to the sidelines real quick, bring in Shannon Thomas. And Shannon, how's the atmosphere down there? You're uh, on the far side from us. We're on the home sideline. You're on the away sideline, standing at about the 40-yard line, all bundled up. I can see you from here. How's the atmosphere? Oh, the atmosphere is great. Both fans got here really early. I think they end up starting. Let, they weren't going to let anybody in until 5:30, but the traffic was backing up pretty bad. But both both teams are starting to fill the stadium up. Players are excited. Both teams out here jumping around, excited. See, uh, we're going to kick it off here in about 25 minutes. See what happens. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, I know you were around uh, some players this week. Uh, how's their feelings coming into the game, Shannon? Uh, any of my players? A couple of them I talked to this week. I kind of gave my nephew his distance this week. Didn't talk to him a whole lot, but they they're excited. They said, you know. They wasn't expected to be here on a lot of people's radar. They got here. They're having fun. They said practices went great this week. They, they're they here. Going to play another another round of football. Absolutely. That's Shannon Thomas on the sidelines. We'll catch up with Shannon here in just a little bit and go inside the huddle with Shannon. That's coming up after this timeout. But, uh, Travis, uh, regional championship games. Reno's been here a lot. Matt's been here a couple of times, but uh, a lot of stakes on the line here tonight for the Braves. Yeah, absolutely. You think about it, Joe, you're in the elite eight. There's only eight teams in the entire division that's that's playing tonight, and uh, if you do that, that's rarefied error, and, you know, Coach Lancaster and the Braves have been here before. They're going to have to rely on that experience. 
Coach Reno, they, they've made a living here. They brought home state titles. And, uh, you know, that when you're playing here, the goal is always to practice on Thanksgiving. You win tonight, you're going to be in the Final Four. Absolutely. Beautiful facility here at St. Clairsville High School, the home of the big, uh, the Red Devils. And uh, beautiful field, beautiful press box. Uh, big thanks to uh, the St. Clairsville community here for having us. Uh, what a spread behind us as yeah, well. Yeah, hospitality back here is second to none. I've got a restroom for us. I know, right? We don't you have know, to go anywhere to go to the restroom. Here, yeah. so. but great, uh, uh, great facility. We're going to see great football, we and that's are. what we're here for. And both teams play the game the right way. They play hard, and I'm excited to go. Going to be a cold football game here tonight. Fans bundled up, announcers bundled up, teams bundled up. But we're going to take a break, come back, and we'll be uh, talking with Shannon Thomas in the huddle for the Indian Valley Braves. That's after this. You're listening to Big C Sports right here on Z Country 99.9. I am Zach Motais with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in Sugar Creek, Strasburg, and downtown New Philadelphia, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this fall. When struggles seem too tough, when sickness takes a hold, when cancer picks a fight, when baby's on its way, when life throws you a curveball, we've got you. With nearly 130 years in your backyard, Altman knows you and knows your community better than anyone. We're your neighbors, your friends, your family, and we want you to be the healthiest you can be. Altman, we are ready. We've got you. Touch. Fall is in the air. Winter is coming. Call the propane guys at TMK Valley Propane. We make sure your home is warm and cozy all winter long. Serving your local area, we bring you the best in service. Call today. All the way with TMK. Service with a personal touch. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Tailgating season is here, so why not do it in style with a new car, truck, or SUV from Parkway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Dover. Choose a winning game plan when you bring your trade and ask about great financing options on any car, truck, or SUV on the lot. Joel and the Parkway CDJR team will help you shop and find the best deal for you. No hassle and no stress. Football season is the perfect time for a great deal, so pick a winner at Parkway Dodge Jeep Ram and Dover today. Your way, the right way. Visit ParkwayChryslerDodgeJeepRam.com and drive. Ride forward. This is Jordan Hartzler. At Hartzler's Quality Housing, our goal is to help customers achieve the dream of home ownership. We have been a family-owned, affordable housing business for over 40 years. We value our customers and have the knowledge and experience to help you walk through the home buying process from start to finish. Conveniently located just off I-77 in New Philadelphia, stop by and browse their model homes or learn more by visiting Hartzler's.com. The First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Janate and Hutton, South Broadway and Shunbrun in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Hi, this is Phil with the Ford Parkway Quick Lane Service. When the vehicle that transports your team needs maintenance, you expect it to be done accurately and quickly so you can get back on the road. Don't get sidelined by your vehicle. When it comes to servicing your team's vehicle, let my all-star team at Parkway deliver you the winning combination to keep you on the road and safe for the long haul.
3.9 Z Country. Welcome back to the Wood Electric pregame show. Joe Geckler, Travis McClellan in the huddle with Shannon Thomas from Indian Valley Insider. And Shannon, last week the Indian Valley Braves, they knock off um, Bishop Reedy and they win 34 to 10. And that game, I don't think that game was even that close, Shannon. Uh, you, you know, your thoughts on that game last week, uh, rewind a week and talk about the game for Bishop Reedy. Yeah, you know, it's tough to say how close I thought the game would be because I didn't really know a lot about Bishop Reedy other than they could run the ball really well. And I've known Indian Valley for the last seven years. The one thing Indian Valley has always been able to do is stop the run. So I gave the advantage to Indian Valley just based on that because I know that program and I knew what they were capable of doing. But I wasn't prepared for how easy Indian Valley was able to move the ball offensively. They did, they did what they want at will. They kept hitting the home run plays, like Travis said, big plays on defense, play, special team plays. You know, they, they just pulled it all together last week, and that, that was a fun football game to watch because those kids were having fun last week, and that's what they've done since the playoffs started. They've just had fun, and it's just a whole different mindset being around these kids the last three weeks. Yeah, Shannon, we're going to stay on the offensive side of the ball, and you nailed it on the head. They, they ripped big old runs off there. They actually outgained Bishop Reedy 439 to 194. Talk about, uh, you know, obviously we know they run the football the, at 264 yards a game, but talk about the different look on offense. They had two touchdown passes last week. Just talk about that offense as a whole and the different dynamic that sets up the defense for uh, to watch multiple facets. I think the biggest improvement for that uh, offense the last couple weeks has been to play their offensive line. They changed some things up, put in some different personnel. They've really grown together all year long, and they've put it together here in the playoffs. And then when you have all of your athletes on the field as far as, you know, Grady Kenzie, Colton Thomas, and Gavin Henry, you really don't know who's getting the ball. And, you know, for a freshman, Gavin Henry, or Grady Kenzie was just impressive last week. You know, he weighs probably a buck fifty, five foot nine or ten, whatever he is. And they had a pretty big defensive front for Bishop Reedy, and, and Kenzie just ran hard and dragged people downhill with him. Shannon, you mentioned their running game last week, 41 carries, 344 yards. Um, they only threw the ball six times for 95 yards. Of course, the one um, highlight play by Colton to um, Eric Golder. But if you talk about the running game, you mentioned Grady Kenzie, 11 carries, 149 yards and a touchdown. He went 60 yards on that. Then Gavin Henry had 113 yards, two touchdowns. He went 81 on one of his touchdowns. Impressive, impressive running attack for the Braves. Yeah, they just did everything right. Guys hit the holes. They they weren't going down on initial hits last week. They, they were dragging players down the field with them. They were breaking tackles, breaking off long runs. And then that, that kind of set up the, the one pass play that Colton had to Gavin Henry that went 60 yards, I believe. That was just a little rollout by Colton wide open. But that was all based off because of how strong their running game was. I believe Indian Valley's always been a strong running team. They've never been a throwing team, and they're going to have to establish that strong run tonight, and you're going to have to have success with it. Shannon, we're going to flip to the other side of the football. The Braves are only giving up 13.3 on the ground. They play physical. They play fast. You know, you've had great defensive end play from Landon Green lately. Uh, Remy Myers has had a great season. Quake Baby, Quake Beatty's been phenomenal at, at the middle linebacker position. Of course, Colton Thomas at the free safety. They have athletes at all three levels. Talk about that Braves defense. Yeah, that Braves defense has been phenomenal all year, but it starts up front with their defensive line. Landon Green, uh, Justin Kadgett, and uh, Kale Coachman have done unbelievable work this year. Reese Colson will come in on some plays. They did their job. They've taken care of the stuff up front. And that, that allows guys like Remy Myers, Quake Beatty, uh, Cam Gusbitt, and the, and the kid I like to watch play football, Jackson Bircher, is an absolute beast. Jackson Bircher plays every play like he's there to take somebody's head off. And, and they, they've just been really impressive this year. And they was impressive again last week, fast and hard hitting. Well, Shannon, let's move to this week. And, of course, the Steubenville Big Red. Big task at Heron tonight uh, for Indian Valley. But, obviously, uh, Indian Valley can stop the run very well. We just talked about it. But uh, with the way Steubenville runs the football, what are your keys for Indian Valley to be victorious here tonight? That defensive line, that defensive line has got to be able to, to plug up holes. they gotta, they got to keep them from, you know, slant, slant blocking because – Sometimes Steubenville likes to just move down the line and find that hole and go. They like to run a lot of counters. I think Indian Valley, if the defensive line can do their job, that way the linebackers can get there and clean it up. You know, they don't throw the ball a whole lot. I mean, they do have 2,000 yards passing. They got one, a really good wide receiver. So you got to be careful because Indian Valley's safeties like to play the run first. 
but you better watch it. You could get burnt pretty big. So I just think that defensive front has got to be able to get the job done tonight and get some penetration. Yeah, Shannon, and, uh, you know, going into week 14 and practicing here, talk about what that means to – because this community in Janaton Hutton and Midvale and Tusky and all around support this program. We look across the way and it's all full. Talk about the community support. You saw the uh, the parade out of town today. Just talk about that for a second. Yeah, this football program, all Indian Valley athletes get great support from their community. Like I said last week, you, you could have a losing season and the stadiums would still be full. They, they support these young men. They packed the stadium, or Janaton today at the scare, they, all the way down 36. They packed all the way to Port Washington, and they followed the buses all the way down here. It was a great week of practice for these kids. They're excited. Their families are excited. The community's excited. So all that's left to do now is play football. Absolutely. Again, uh, Shannon Thomas joining us in the huddle. Big thanks to Stocker Concrete. We're going to take a break, come back, and we will be joined by Steubenville head coach Reno Suckosh. You're listening to Big Z Sports and the Wood Electric pregame show right here on Z Country 99.9. The Tusky Deli not only offers the lowest prices around on their deli items, but they also carry holiday gift boxes and offer made-to-order meat and cheese trays at the lowest prices around. Perfect for your upcoming holiday parties at home or at the office. Plus, you can give the gift of a Tusky Deli gift card, which makes the perfect stocking stuffer for Christmas. To see all the Tusky Deli has to offer, find them on Facebook. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Top-notch auto on East Plum Alley in Janaden, your one-stop shop for all your vehicle needs. Offering an experienced staff that can handle just what you need to keep your vehicle running at its best. Top-notch auto specializes in diagnostics with state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment. Whether your vehicle needs routine maintenance or major repairs, Top-notch auto can handle all your vehicle needs. They also offer a large selection of tire brands, including Goodyear, Kelly, and Cooper, just to name a few. Find Top-notch auto LLC on Facebook or call them at 740-561-4100. Planning your next vacation or home improvement project and worried about managing expenses? CSB can help with that. Setting a goal is the first step to achieving your vision, and CSB's Money Manager tool helps you get started. Whether you are recovering from Christmas spending or preparing to send kids to college, the Personal Financial Management tool helps you set goals, track your spending, and monitor your progress. Money Manager is available within CSB's online banking. Check it out today. The Commercial and Savings Bank, member FDIC. Dr. Nathan Springer is in the business of making smiles, specializing in braces and Invisalign for children and adults. Dr. Springer provides smiles that can be recognized anywhere. Just look at the winning smile on some of the players. Compliments of Dr. Nathan Springer Orthodontics. Hey, that smile of pride on the face of mom and dad might be from Dr. Springer too. Dr. Nathan Springer Orthodontics in the business of making smiles at 107 Ray Avenue Northeast in New Philadelphia. Make your dream home a reality with Designer Stone Company in Port Washington. They offer granite and quartz countertops, custom made to fit your home. Explore Designer Showroom to discover the possibilities for your new kitchen or bath. The Designer Stone Company is on Facebook and conveniently located on State Route 36 in Port Washington. Welcome back to St. Clairsville High School. You're listening to the Wood Electric pregame show. Joe Geckler in the huddle with Steubenville head coach Reno Suckosh presented by Stocker Concrete, the concrete material provider you can rely on. Coach, the Big Red knocked off Columbus East 41-22 last week. After watching film, how do you feel your team performed? Well, I thought we started out a wee little bit, a little bit slow, and then uh, after that I thought we picked it up and we executed pretty well from the second and third quarter. Coach, offensively, you are run-dominated attack. The Big Red are averaging 233 yards a game with 36 touchdowns. But the offense can throw it downfield if you need to. Talk to us about your offense. Well, I think that, you know, um, we're a lot like Indian Valley. You know, the, 
the running game steps up our passing game and um uh, but to do that, you have to have, be successful with the running game. So, in regards to tonight, we just got, you know, hopefully we make the, the run go so we can get uh, a little bit of play action pass or some three step drop. Coach, defensively, the Big Red are only giving up 14 points a game, 204 yards of total offense per game. Um, who are the stars on your defensive club that we should be looking for here tonight? Well, I won't mention any stars. I, uh, I don't believe in that, but I believe in uh, just the you know, football theme has to be gap sound. And uh, the three major things are alignment, assignment, and be able to adjust. And uh, that's, you know, every kid that, that plays on defense has to be able to do that, has to be able to execute his assignment. Coach, how's practice been this week? Well, if we could transfer practice to the game on Saturdays, we'd be pretty good. But so far, we haven't done that very often. But when we've done that, we've, we've been pretty successful. And we had a really good week of practice, even though it was, you know, the temperature was like this. We had a good week of practice, and hopefully we can carry it over to tonight's game. The Indian Valley Braves staying in your way this week. What do you know about them? What do you expect from them? I expect uh, just r- right now, just looking at them on film and and, uh, and uh, talking to people, they're a very, very good team. Um, they, they're a lot like us. They don't have any outstanding individuals, but they have a good team. They spread the ball around, and they, and they play with a lot of pride and heart. Coach, we'd be remiss to not to say congratulations for becoming the all-time winningest head coach in high school football history earlier in the season. What does that award mean to you and your program? Well, uh, it means to me whatever it means to everybody else that's in the program. If they appreciate it, I appreciate it. And I think, it, you know, it's just a team thing. And, and uh, um, you know, we, we preach team. And for me to talk about that would, would uh, be going against what, what I what I really believe. And I just I hope that everybody um, – um, it feels like I do. I mean, I feel like it's an achievement, but I feel like that, you know, it took a lot of people to get it done, not just myself. Finally, Coach, what are your three keys for moving on to the state semifinals next week? Get lined up, be gap sound, and protect the football. Thanks, Coach. Good luck here tonight. Thank you very much. You've been in the huddle with Steubenville head coach Reno Suckosh, presented by Stocker Concrete. Coming up next, starting lineups and kickoff between the Big Red and Braves right here on Z Country 99.9. Dino Pergolini and Sons Equipment Incorporated is your one-stop shop for all your equipment needs. Offering the option to buy, rent, sell, or trade equipment is what separates Dino Rents from everyone else. With pickup and delivery or even field service available in their service department, Dino Rents can handle repairs needed for any maker model. Dino Pergolini and Sons Equipment is located just past Midvale Speedway and can be found on Facebook or contacted at 330-364-8055. Also offering a location in Caddis to better serve you. We are the Tyson family and we would like to invite you to come visit your Little Caesars Pizza on West High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Looking for a quick and affordable lunch that's ready when you are? Try the lunch combo at Little Caesars Pizza. For just $5, you'll get half of a deep, deep dish pepperoni and cheese pizza plus a 20-ounce Pepsi product. This tasty $5 combo is available daily 11 until 2. And if you miss lunch, you can still take home the deep, deep dish Little Caesars Pizza all day, every day for only 8 bucks. Big taste, small price. Come visit us at Little Caesars Pizza on West High Avenue, New Philadelphia. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with Auto Works Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, Auto Works has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art talk to Reno and then we talked to Shannon Thomas about Indian Valley but uh, beautiful night for high school football a little cold but it's uh it's the middle of November yeah you know we're looking at uh, Thanksgiving next week so uh, cold is what it is but uh you know a beautiful night for football clear skies and uh you know we're going to kick it off here in about six minutes yeah we uh, of course uh we do have our um uh, tape delayed version of our video broadcast tonight uh, thanks to Claxon communications uh, with uh, spectrum being here we could not uh, do it live uh, ohsa has the rights to that so you will be able to catch it on our youtube channel at 10 o'clock tonight so if you want to go back and watch it you can do that on our youtube channel wtz big z sports uh check us out on facebook daniel adams is here tonight with social media and uh that's on facebook and on twitter at big underscore z sports and of course instagram as well well, 
Indian Valley, they won the toss. They deferred to the second half. That means Steubenville will have the football first to start the football game. And Travis will go over the Indian Valley starting defense. Yeah, we're going to start on the hit squad for the Braves, Joe, at left defensive end. He wears number 50. It's Landon Green. He's a 5'9", 205, and a junior. And at the right defensive end, number 54, Justin Caggett. He's 5'8", 160, and a junior. The nose tackle tonight, number 52, Kale Coachman. He's 5'9", 180, and a senior. The linebacking core tonight, the left outside linebacker, number 32, Remy Myers, he's six foot, 185, and a senior. Number 60, Braden Parsons, also an outside linebacker, 6'2", 185, and a senior. Number 10, Cole Stevens, 5'9", 145, and a junior. In the middle linebackers tonight, number 18, Jackson Bercher, he's a six foot, 190 pound sophomore. And number 24, Quake Beatty, the 5'8", 150, and the junior. The, the DBs tonight, number 34, Brogan Bercher, he's 5'10", 175, and a senior. Number 27, Gavin Henry, he's 5'10", 180, and a senior. And of course, the free safety, he wears seven. Colton Thomas, he's six foot, 170, and a junior. Now take a look at the Steubenville Big Red offense. Now up front, number 66, Ben. Ben Berge, 6'1", 250, and a sophomore. At left guard, number 73, Javen Harper, he's 6'1", 275, and a junior. At center, Kellen Marshall wears number 67, 5'10", 190, and a senior. At right guard, number 55, Demetrius Lease, he's 5'11", 240, and a junior. And at right tackle, number 78, Bryce Huff, he's 6'2", 270, and a senior. Quarterback, Phaeton Hill, he wears number 70, 6'2", 180, and a senior. Running back, Gavin Basica, he's 6'1", 225, and a senior, wears number 23, and Kai John Hopkins at fullback, 6 foot 200, and a senior. Wide receivers tonight, number 6, Isaac Hill, 6'3", 210, and a junior. And number 15, Heikum Edwards, 5'10", 165, and a senior as well. And at tight end, number 17, Jace Kernahan. He is six foot 190 and a junior. Some other guys you'll see on offense for Steubenville. Tylik Simmons, 6'1", 196 and a senior. He wears number 21. And number four, Ivan Bugs. He's 6'2", 165 and a senior. That's the starting lineups for the offense of Steubenville and the defense for Indian Valley. Now let's take a look at the defense for Steubenville. Yeah, number 32, defensive end Spencer Ostovich. He's 5'11", 225 and a senior. Number six, Isaac Hill. He's 6'3", 210 and a junior. The two defensive tackles tonight. Taven Harper, he's number 73. He's 6'1", 275 and a junior. And 52, Peyton Corby. He's 6'1", 250 and a junior. Linebacking core tonight. Number 25, Elijah Mullins. He's 5'9", 170 and a junior. And the right outside linebacker, number 15, Heikem Edwards. He's 5'10", 165 and a senior. The two middle backers tonight for the Big Red. 16, Zach Smith. He's 6'190 and a senior. And number 10, Kai John Hopkins. He's 6'200 and a senior. The DBs tonight, number 4, Ivan Bugs. He's 6'1", 160 and a senior. Number 9, Micah Mitchell. He's 5'9", 140 and a senior. And in the strong safety tonight, 21, Tylek Sims. He's six foot, 200 and a senior. And the free safety tonight for the Big Reds. Number five, Brody Suckosh. He's 5'9", 145 and a sophomore. Take a look at the Indian Valley offense now at left tackle. Number 52, Kale Coachman. He's 5'9", 180 and a senior. At left guard, number 64, Hayden Wrench. 6'4", 240 and a junior. Center, Brady Parsons, or Braden Parsons, excuse me, wears number 60, 6'2", 185 and a senior. At right guard, number 62, Easton Cook. 6'1", 200 and a senior. And at right tackle, Gio Lowe Lopez wears number 78, and he's 5'9", 275, and a senior. Quarterback, number 7, Colton Thomas, 6 foot, 170, and a junior. Running backs, number 22, Grady Kenzie, he's 5'9", 165, and a freshman. Number 18, Jackson Bercher, 6 foot, 190, and a sophomore. You also see Gavin Henry, he wears number 27, 5'10", 180, and a senior. And number 25, Eric Golder, 5'8", 140, and a sophomore. Some other guys you might see on offense tonight for the Braves, number 10, Cole Steven, 5'9", 145, and a junior. And number 34, Brogan Bercher, he's 5'10", 175, and a sophomore. And the starting tight end for the Braves, number 32, Remy Myers, 6'185", and a senior. And you may see number one, Reese Colson, in there as well. He's 6'3", 215, and a senior. And, of course, the Braves, the away team here tonight, they're in their all-white uniforms, their blue helmets with their arrow on the side of the helmets. They're white uniforms, white jerseys, red, red numerals trimmed in blue. Uh, red and blue stripes down the legs of their white pants. If you look at Steubenville, they have white pants, white socks, red jerseys, white numerals with their red helmet. I believe that's the S on the side of the helmet for Steubenville as they come out. And there, uh, Steubenville is going to be going right to left on your radio dial. Indian Valley will be going left to right here in the first half or in the first quarter. 
So Daniel Miller has it teed up for Indian Valley, and he puts his right leg into it. The Adams board kickoff is going to be fielded at about the 12-yard line. Taken up here to the 20. Cuts to the far side. He gets tripped up at about the 23-yard line, and that's where Steubenville will take over and start their first drive of the game. First and 10 for the Big Red. Yeah, great coverage there defensively on the kickoff there by Indian Valley. Got underneath the block there. Upended him on the teacups, got him down about the 23-yard line, Joe. Great, great stop. Underway here at St. Clairsville, 11.56 to go here. First quarter, no score. First and 10 at their own 23-yard line for Steubenville. Steubenville comes in on the season. They are 11-2 overall. They come out with an eye formation. Two receivers on the far side, Phaeton Hill under center. Kai John Hopkins. At fullback, dotting the eye. It's going to be a quick pass out to the far sideline. Has his receiver and gets shoved out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Pickup of about seven for Steubenville. Yeah, a little sticker out there, Joe. Uh, they just run a little stop route, get it out there, flick it out, try to pick it up. That's used as a run and try to spread you out. Looks like that was Isaac Hill on the reception, 6'3", 210, and a junior. The receiver for the Big Red. Big Red comes back out, same formation. Two receivers on the far side, eye formation with Bazika dotting the eye. The handoff is the Bazika hits the hole hard, and he's going to get very close to the first down. It looks like he has it. It's going to be a, oh, no, a legal shift. It's going to be a, a five-yard penalty on Steubenville. Didn't see the flag sitting over there at about the 30 on the far yeah, side Yeah, that's line. hard to see from up here, Joe, but they did throw a flag. It's going to be on the wide receiver there. I'm assuming he wasn't set in time, and uh, but Bazika's a big boy, 6'1", 225. When he gets going downhill there, he's tough to hold, but uh, – a little break there for the Braves. They get the penalty, back them up. It's going to be second and eight. Second and eight now for the big red. Bazika, like you said, 6'1", 225. Got to hit him low. You got to take his legs out early. from underneath. Got to take his legs out from underneath him and hit him low. Again, the Steubenville big red, white pants, red jerseys, white numerals, red helmet with the S on the side. Second down and eight from their own 25-yard line. I formation, two receivers on the far side. Phaeton Hill under center. And now Heikam Edwards comes in motion here to the near side. They're going to give it to Basika again. He lowers his shoulder and gets out past the 30-yard line. And that's uh, going to bring up third down and about three for Steubenville. Yeah, they ran stretch there, Joe. Just zone blocking up front, and uh, they pick the hole and go, and that's what they're known for. Steubenville in a hurry now. Two receivers on the near side, eye formation. Bazika dots the eye. Bazika takes the handoff off the left side. Oh, he's going to be stopped short of the first down. The Indian Valley defense in there to bring up fourth down. Great job by the defense to bring up fourth down. Yeah, what an excellent play by the front seven there. And what, what Steubenville's doing is they're fan blocking, Joe. They're going straight down the line of scrimmage and just zone blocking there. A running back picks the hole. Indian Valley was up to the task there. Colton Thomas back deep to return this punt. And actually, it looks like Steubenville is going to go for it. And they do. They hand it off to the fullback up the middle. And he lowers his shoulder, takes a shot about the 35-yard line. But that's going to be enough for a first Federal Community Bank first down. Early, early gamble there by the Big Reds going for it in their own territory. They pick up the first down there. But uh, nice opening series by the Braves defense. Really made Steubenville work for it there, Joe. They did as Colton Thomas dropped back deep to repunt, uh, return the punt and realized they were not punting. He ran uh, in a sprint back to the line of scrimmage to try to stop that. Uh, handoff to the fullback. Unfortunately, they were able to pick up the first down. I formation receiver on both sides of the uh, on the line. Uh, got a false start there. That's going to be on number 73, Javen Harper, the 6'1", 275-pound junior for the Big Red. Yeah, left guard there. Looked like he was uh, turning to say something to the center quarterback, lifted his hand, and that's a false start, Joe. Either that or looking to pull. He was going to pull out uh, to the trap. Yeah, yeah, a little trap, yeah. uh, pull over to the next side, so on the other side of the offensive line. 10-10 to go here in the first quarter. No score between Indian Valley and Steubenville. Receiver goes in motion to the far side. Now two receivers on the far side. The handoff is to the back through, and that's going to be number 24. And he is all the way to the far sideline, up to the 40, to the 30, down the sideline. Makes one guy miss, steps out of another tackle. It's all the way down inside the 15. Fumbled the football, And he fumbled Joe. the football away, and it went and picked up by a number 20. number 20 for the Steubenville Big Red. Picks it up and takes it into the end zone. So that was Xavier Falks on the run. The, the, the junior and number 20, Ty Pierce, picks up the fumble and takes it into the end zone. A bad break there for the Indian Valley Braves. Xavier Falks was able to break down all the way inside the 15-yard line. He fumbled it away, and number 20, Ty Pierce, picked it up and ran it into the end zone for the first score of the game as Cole Bowers is on for the extra point for the Big Red. 
The snap, the hold, the kick, it is up and it is good. And the Steubenville Big Red leads 7 0 with 9.48 to go here in the first quarter. Timeout on the field, a Kaufman Realty timeout. We'll take it with them back after this with Big Z Sports. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with AutoWorks Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, AutoWorks has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let AutoWorks of Strasburg work for you. Welcome back to St. Clairsville High School. Steubenville with a touchdown run to get on the board early, board early here with 9.48 to go. Uh, Xavier Folks took off, took the handoff all the way down inside the 15, fumbled it away, and Ty Pierce was able to pick it up and run it into the end zone for the Big Red. Now the Indian Valley Braves will have the football after the ensuing Adams board kickoff as we have a stoppage on the field, and it's going to be a penalty flag. Looks like it's probably going to be against Steubenville for being offsides on the kickoff. We'll head down to the sidelines. This trip to the sidelines brought to you by Dr. Nathan Springer. Shannon, tough break for the Indian Valley defense right there. Yeah, Steubenville got through that line, and he made a nice cut to get running. He was able to poke the ball out with lucky bounce right in the other hands of another player, and he was able to run it right in. Those are the type of breaks you got to get to win a game. So. Any of going to have to find a way to switch this momentum back around. Looks like we had a five-yard penalty on Steubenville. Offsides on the kickoff, so they back him up now. Looks like Colton Thomas and Gavin Henry back to return this kickoff, the Adams board kickoff. There are three early penalties for the Big Red, Joe. As he gets his left foot into the ball, it's going to be a high end over and kick. Fielder to about the 16. That's Colton Thomas takes it to the far sideline. He's up here to the 30. Breaks out of a tackle to 35 to the 40. Comes here to the near side and it gets all the way up close to midfield where he's going to be down at about the 47 yard line. Great field position for the Indian Valley Braves. That's the answer back that you want, Joe, after giving up a touchdown there. You kick it to Colton Thomas. He, they have a bench return on. They get to their corner. He finds the, he finds the gap. Gets up in there, gets it clear up over the 45 to about the 47. Great starting field position. Again up front for the Indian Valley Braves. Coachman, Wrench, Parsons, Cook, and Lopez. Colton Thomas, your quarterback. Grady, Kenzie, Jackson, Bircher in the backfield. Gavin Henry, Eric Golder as well at wide receiver. Shotgun formation. The snap is the give to Kenzie. He breaks out of a tackle, gets into midfield, up to midfield, into Steubenville territory. Taven Harper with a stop for the Big Red. Yeah, nice first run there by the freshman going off left guard, left tackle with the quick hitter, and uh, he drug a guy for about a yard there, and uh, Taven Harper's not a small guy to drag, 275 there, but strong lower half there by Kinsey, and they pick up nice yards on first down. The Braves come out now in a uh, full uh, backfield, a shotgun formation. Two backs in the backfield is Bircher and Grady Kinsey, receiver on the far sideline. That's going to be number 10. Cole Steven, now there's going to be a timeout on the field. We'll take it with him, a Kaufman Realty timeout. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Located in the rolling hills of Holmes County, Kime Home Center is the destination and trusted source for your home, building, and woodworking needs. And we are now offering appliances. At Kime, you'll find major kitchen and laundry appliance brands such as General Electric, Whirlpool, Speed Queen, and much more. Our sales and service teams can help with product selection, delivery, installation, ongoing maintenance, and repair. Give us a call or stop by today. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Back to Big Z Sports on 99.9. Welcome back to St. Clairsville High School. Head down to the sidelines. A trip to the sidelines brought to you by Dr. Nathan Springer. Shannon, quick time out there for the Braves to get adjustments made here on the fly. Yeah, I don't know if Coach Lank didn't like the defensive lineup or if he didn't have the right personnel because he was over here on the sideline yelling out instructions and the players wasn't getting it. Shotgun formation, two backs in the backfield, two receivers on the far side now. Remy Myers ships to the far side. Colton Thomas takes off running to the far side. Gets strung out of bounds and shoved out of bounds finally at about the uh, original line of scrimmage, maybe lost about a half a yard. 
to bring up second down now for the Braves. Third yeah, down for the Braves. They went quarterback ISO there, Joe, between the two fullbacks. He tried to bounce it outside the left tackle there through the seven hole. And a nice string out there by the Steubenville defensive line. They go straight down the line of scrimmage and no pickup there for the junior. Third down and six from the Steubenville 48 yard line receiver on both sides of the field. Shotgun formation now. Gavin Henry goes in motion here to the near side. Makes two receivers here now on the near side with Kinsey in the backfield with Colton Thomas. Thomas hands off to Kinsey straight up the middle, and he gets dropped. About a yard gain, maybe two yards for Kinsey. Taven Harper on the stop for the Big Red brings up fourth down. Yeah, Taven Harper along with Kai John Hopkins there for the stop. It's going to be fourth down, and uh, looks like Coach Lancaster is going to play uh, field position here in punt, but they are in fake position here, Joe. They're in that territory. Indian Valley has it fourth down and four inside Steubenville territory at their 47-yard line. Snap is back. Colton Thomas, low line drive punt, going to be fielded at about the 20-yard line. And their returner, that's going to be number six for the Steubenville Big Red, or number five. That's actually Brody Sukhosh to return that punt for the Steubenville Big Red. And they will have it first and 10 at around the 30-yard line. And that's where their second drive will Commence. Number 18, Jackson Bircher there on the stop on the punt for the Braves. 7-0, Steubenville leads Indian Valley, 8-16 to go here. First quarter, Joe Geckler, Travis McClellan, Shannon Thomas on the sidelines for Big Z Sports here tonight. Week number 14 in the high school football season, middle of November, high school football regional championship. The handoff is to Bazika on the far sideline, lowers his shoulder, and gets out past the 30, up close to the 35-yard line. Say he's going to be down at the 34, bring up second down and manageable for Steubenville. They're running the Steubenville stretch, Joe, and uh, it's a little zone blocking scene. The right side areas, backside uh, gaps, and uh, the right off the right tackle there, pick up good yards on first down. I formation, the quick snap, the handoff to Bazika. Gets stuck at the line of scrimmage and gets no more. Going to bring up second down. Maybe gained a half a yard. It's going to bring up third down now for Steubenville. In their own territory at about the 35-yard line. So Indian Valley has them third down and about four now as they come back out in a shotgun formation this time. Two receivers on this side, on the near side. One on the far side, Bazika in the backfield. The hand is to Bazika. Gets submarine at the line of scrimmage, and he does not get to the line to gain for the first down and that's going to bring up fourth down for Steubenville. Nice stop there by number 50 Landon Green and uh, looked like 34 also and on the tackle there that's a uh, I'm sorry 34 for the uh, the Braves that's Brogan Bircher on the stop there it's going to be fourth down it looks like Steubenville is going to have to punt. Looks like Steubenville will punt the football away this time number 84 Hayden Hicks back to punt the football away to number seven Colton Thomas for Indian Valley has his feet planted on about the 34 yard line in his own territory. It's going to be a fake here by Steubenville up to the up man lowers his shoulder and gets out past the 40 yard line and that's going to be enough for a first down for the Steubenville Big Red, a, a first federal community bank first down. Little river broke gambling there out of him again, Joe. Two fourth downs. Went for it on the first one out of a regular formation. Fake punted there, and uh, they're rolling the dice to try to win. They're gambling, and both times it paid off for them. First and 10 now at their own 40-yard line for Steubenville as they have went for it on both fourth downs. First out of a traditional formation, then out of a fake punt. They snapped it to the up back. Now they come out with an eye formation receiver here on the near side. Now it looks like there's going to be a timeout on the field taken by Steubenville. We'll take it with him, a Coffin Realty timeout. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. Welcome back to Steuben, Steubenville and Indian Valley Division 4 Region 15 Championship game from St. Clairsville High School. Joe Geckler, Travis McClellan, and Shannon Thomas on the sidelines. 
huge uh, fake punt there for the Big Red. Yeah, they went for it again and snapped it there to the up back, powered over left guard, got the first down, and then uh, had to call timeout, did Reno, and he's out here unhappy about something with the white hat again, Joe. So we're going to see what the uh, discussion is here on the field with Reno and the white hat. The white hat's going down to the site manager here, Joe. We'll see what happens as uh, the White Hats talking to the site manager here on site at St. Clairsville High School. Going to head down to Shannon Thomas and talk to Shannon. She didn't have any idea what's, uh, what Reno is uh, complaining about. Yeah, I think they're upset with the play clocks not working down here. Well, it's probably too cold for it to run. <laughs> Shannon, you know, the, the Braves defense has done their job. They held them both times on fourth down. Stoneville went for it on a traditional and punt fake, but Stoneville defense really playing, or I'm sorry, Braves defense really playing hard early. Yeah, they're, they're playing hard, they're hitting hard, they're doing their job. Just two big plays right here has killed them. Shotgun formation now, receiver. Going to have a little end around to the receiver on the far sideline to the 40. Spins out of a tackle and inside the floor up to the 46-yard line. That was number 15, Highcomb Edwards with the five-yard gain for the Big Red. They fake the stretch there, Joe, and they go uh, reverse to number 15, Heikum, and uh, number 34, Brogan Bircher, and seven, Colton Thomas there on the stop. So it's going to bring up second down and five now at the 45-yard line for Steubenville. Comes out in an I formation. Nope, shotgun formation. Now two receivers split here to the near side. Make it three receivers now as Phaeton Hill drops back. Looking, fires over here to the near side. Has a receiver, number four, and he has him at the 10. Five, touchdown. And that's going to be Ivan Bugs for a touchdown. Looks like we do have a penalty flag. Way back at around the 35-yard line. Let's see what the penalty is going to be, but it's going to be about a 55-yard touchdown strike if this holds. The officials are talking about it on the far sidelines. And we it looks like we may have a block in the back or maybe a clip could be bringing the touchdown back. That was an awful late touchdown, Joe. I think it's going to be on the extra point. It's going to be a dead ball personal foul, but Stoneville ran the trips bunch here, and uh, you get a free release that way. You can't jam, and they released down in the middle of the field, and uh, they ran a post, a streak, and an out, and uh, the middle guy got hit for a touchdown. What they're going to do is call personal foul and back him up on the extra point or the kickoff. It's going to be a dead ball. Touchdown is good. So we're going to have a dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Steubenville. So that will be, be on the kickoff. That'll be on the kickoff. Yes, sir. I didn't see when the flag was thrown. Shannon, you were down there. Did you see when they threw the flag? Was it well after the touchdown? It was, yeah. Yeah, I, I think he had crossed in the end zone. But it looked like it was a maybe like a I, – I can't say. I thought it was a crackback block against Quake Beatty, but it was well after the play. So I don't know if they just took it as unsportsmanlike. They were just fighting. I don't know. Yeah, they. what happened, Shannon, is they threw that play late, the flag way late after he had scored. I think it was an excessive celebration by the offensive lineman there. He walked up about five yards into a face of a brave there and picked up the penalty. The extra point was good for Steubenville to make the score 14-0, 539 to go here. First quarter, take a break. Back after this, you're listening to Big Z Sports right here on Z Country 99.9. Is there anything better than high school sports? Hi, this is Dan Hosteller of Fair Chevrolet Buick Toyota. High school sports brings out the best of our high schools and our communities. And the people at Ferris have always been behind the importance of athletics and academics. Just like we believe in the great cars and trucks that we sell and service every day. Like high school sports, we are a great tradition in the area. Ferris on the Wabash, New Philadelphia. Five thirty-nine to go here. First quarter, fourteen nothing. Steubenville leads Indian Valley from St. Clairsville High School. Joe Geckler, Travis McClellan, Shannon Thomas on the sidelines. Of course, Claxon Communications here with us as well. You can check out our delayed broadcast of our video stream tonight uh, on our YouTube channel, WTUZ Big Z Sports. Big thanks to DAC Vitamins and Minerals, Altman Hospital, Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, and TMK Valley Propane for their sponsorships. And we are, of course, here live at St. Clairsville High School. 
uh, in our heart source quality housing mobile studios. Steubenville going to kick the football off. Going to be a high end over and kick. The Adams board kickoff is going to be fielded at about the 18-yard line by Colton Thomas. Up here to the 30, to the 35. Lowers his shoulder and gets all the way up close to the 41-yard line. Another penalty flag on the field down around the 48-yard line. And we'll see what this is going to be maybe against the Indian Valley Braves. Yeah, a little hold there. You know, when it comes from that direction, you know it's going to be a hold. It's going to back him up. From, that's going to be a spot foul, Joe. So that's going to back up to about the 35-yard line. Indian Valley going to have good field position after the uh, after the unsportsmanlike penalty against Steubenville, but the hold will back him up to, the to about the 31-yard line now, trailing 14 to nothing. Indian Valley still plenty of football to be played here tonight in the hole early 14 yeah. nothing with 533 to go first quarter if you're in the valley no need to panic you stick and do what you do you try to put a drive together here put some points on the board but you do what you do the one that's brought you all year and the valley comes out in a shotgun formation receiver on each side of the field now Gavin Henry goes in motion. They're going to give it. Now a reverse all the way back here. Nope, they're going to keep it. Does Gavin Henry faked me out? And he's going to be brought down at around the 25-yard line. Isaac Hill on the stop for the Big Red. Yeah, I tricked us both there, Joe. It looked like Henry was going to hand it off on the reverse, uh, but uh, kept it himself, tried to get over there. But the Stu Mill defense really fast gets him for a loss there of about six. 5.07 to go here in the first quarter. Steubenville 14, Indian Valley nothing. Shotgun formation. Kinsey in the backfield to the right of Colton Thomas. Now receiver goes in motion. That's Gavin Henry. Two now here on the near side, one on the far side. Colton takes the snap, looking run pass option. Makes one guy miss, gets up past the 25 to about the 29-yard line. Going to bring up third down and long for the Braves. Yeah, a little RPO off the right side there, Joe. He was hanging back to see if somebody was open, but he goes off right guard and uh, picks up decent yards on, picks up about four there. Number 30, 32, Spencer Ostovich on the stop there for the Big Red. Coming up under 4.30 to go here in the first quarter. Steubenville 14, Indian Valley nothing. They have it third and 12 at their own 29-yard line. Twins receivers here on the near side and a single receiver on the far side. Shotgun, Colton Thomas takes it, rolls here to the near side. Looking, looking, looking. Takes off running. Oh, nope. Now he gets shoved out Ooh, of bounds, and that's going to be a 15-yarder. couple flags fly in. Colton Thomas, every bit of three feet out of bounds when he took a shot from one of the defenders from Steubenville. Not only was he three feet out of bounds, he already taken he had already taken two steps up the white there, gets hit from behind, and that's going to be a big 15-yarder and a first down. Looks like that was going to be on number 10, Kai John Hopkins, who laid the lumber to Colton Thomas well out of bounds. And that's going to be a 15-yarder and give them a first Federal Community Bank first down for the Braves. Braves now have a little breathing room here. They're up over the 45 to the 46, and, uh, you know, so they have a little room to work, Joe. Steubenville fans booing that penalty, but uh, obviously they didn't see Colton Thomas was halfway to the track when he got hit out of bounds. That's a flag no matter where you play here in high school football in Ohio. Three receivers on the far side, shotgun formation. They're going to hand it to Kinsey, and he is going to get dropped in the backfield by number 32, Ostovich. Ostovich, the all-Ohioan over there, Joe. He's 5'11", 225, and a senior. He made a nice play there to hit Kinsey before he could get going. Kinsey's so quick and so strong. That's how you have to get him on the ground. Spencer Ostovich with a big tackle for loss there on Grady Kinsey. A little bit of a size mismatch as well. Like you said, Ostovich comes in at 225, Kinsey at 165. Going to bring up second down and 12 now for Indian Valley. 3.27 to go here in the first quarter. Two receivers on the far side. Shotgun with two backs in the backfield. They hand off this time to Gavin Henry. Cuts it to the outside, and he's going to be tripped up just short of the 45-yard line. And that's maybe a pickup of one Zach Smith on the stop for the Big Red. Yeah, nice bounce there out of Henry. It wasn't there originally. Smith had filled the hole. He bounced it outside, and uh, a diving shoestring tackle there keeps Henry from getting the corner, and it's going to be third and long. Third and 12 now under three minutes to go here first quarter. Steubenville 14, Indian Valley nothing. First quarter, Joe Geckler, Travis McClellan, Shannon Thomas on the sidelines for Big Z Sports here tonight. 
twins receivers here on the near side. Two backs in the backfield now that Remy Myers moves into the backfield. Colton Thomas takes a snap looking. Penalty flag on the play, and he is going to get dropped in the backfield way back down close to about the 20 nine yard line they're going to call it the 30 yard line say that's where his forward progress was but there is a penalty flag going to have a illegal shift on the indian valley braves of course that will be declined now it's going to be a false start and they're going to decline it joe so that's going to bring up fourth down and about 20 25 so a big loss on the play there by the indian valley braves offense and they're going to punt the football away. Colton Thomas, the punter, looks like number five. Or is that number? Yeah, number five. Oh. That is number five. And that is Brody Sukash back to return this punt. Going to be a high, another penalty flag. False it's going to be another false start uh, against Indian Valley. Back them up five more. Yeah, they're going to back up five more in here. This is a worst case scenario for the Braves there. Back them up five more. That Colton Thomas, the junior, going to have to get off a good punt here because Sukosh is standing with his heels about the 45. We'll see what happens here. Fourth down now and an Uber. Snap is back. Colton Thomas, low line drive kick, going to bounce about the 50, take a Indian Valley roll all the way down to about the 42-yard line. That's where Steubenville will have it. First and 10, leading 14 to nothing. Head down to the sidelines. His trip to the sidelines brought to you by Dr. Nathan Springer. A couple miscues there offensively for the Indian Valley Braves and had to punt the football away, Shannon. It's uh, it's either now uh, got to force a turnover here, got to stop the Big Red with about two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, Indian Valley's not having any success up front in the trenches. The offensive line's got to do a better job of holding those blocks to give the run back, running back and quarterback a chance to make a play. First and 10 at their own 42-yard lines. Two receivers here on the near side, one on the far side. Shotgun and Phaeton Hill fires it over the middle, has his intended receiver. That's going to be number eight for the Big Red. And there's not a number eight on the roster for Steubenville. As we will see. Joe Geckler on the reception. Yeah, I know, right? Um, now he got a shotgun with the receiver goes in motion to the far side. That's going to be number four, Bugs. Phaeton Hill takes a snap, fires here to the near side, and it is going to be picked off by number 32, Remy Myers on the deflection. Right place at the right time for Remy Myers, and the Braves take over with the first turnover of the ball game. Yeah, really nice play there by Remy Myers, the linebacker. It was tipped by 17 there, Jace Kernahan, but he reaches out one hand, Joe did Remy, and pulls it in, interception Braves. A minute 37 to go here, first quarter, 14-0 Steubenville, eye formation, offset eye, power eye for the Braves. As Faulkner now in at quarterback, the handoff here to the near side as he gets tackled is the running back, is that Grady Kenzie? Looks like he got uh, grabbed around the head, no so call on the face mask. mask. There. Two officials standing right there, no call. Going to bring up second down and about nine for the Braves. As Owen Fockler was in at quarterback, now Colton Thomas checks back in at quarterback for the Braves. Number six, Isaac Hill on the stop, the defensive end there, but he had a face full of Kinsey's face, or a handful of his face mask. Twins receivers to the far side, shotgun formation, two backs in the backfield, and a handoff. Nope, Colton Thomas is going to keep it. Oh, he takes a big hit at about the 36-yard line. And that's going to bring up third down and about six for the Braves. What Steubenville's doing defensively, Joe, is in there in that defensive package. The ends are crashing into the guards there and wiping them out, making the, making the backs belly out and hoping the linebackers can scrape and make a play. Third down and medium here for the Braves. Got to pick up a first down. Coming up on 34 seconds to go here. First quarter, 14-0 Steubenville. They lead Indian Valley here at St. Clairsville High School. Shotgun formation, receiver here on the near side and on the far side. Now Gavin Henry comes in motion. Going to be a high snap. Colton Thomas takes it, fires it over to the far sideline, and that's going to be incomplete. And that's going to bring up four down. We saw Colton Thomas have a high snap last week. They're going to call an eligible man downfield. These officiating crew uh, enjoying uh, throwing their flags here tonight so far in the first quarter. I'd like to know how many total penalties we have 
so far. It's going to be an illegal man downfield. The penalty is going to be declined. And that's still going to be four down for the Braves. Yeah, they will decline, Joe. And, uh, yeah, a little scramble, Joe, on the bad snap, the high snap through Colton Thomas's arms. Athletic enough to go get it, Joe. And uh, scrambled to his left. Looks like he was going to get hit. Threw it out of bounds. But, unfortunately, uh, a lineman snuck downfield there a little bit and uh, picked up the penalty. Colton Thomas back deep to punt the football away. Brody Sukosh back deep to return it for Steubenville. High snap again. Going to be a low line drive. Kick it takes an Indian Valley roll all the way down inside the 30-yard line. Yet another flag on the play. Let's see what the uh, call is going to be now. I think the other the extra judge is going to call. He was blocked into it, Joe. I don't agree with that call. I think the White had it, had it correct. It was going to be roughing the kicker. The other the other official, they went to the sixth guy. He's going to call that he got blocked into it. I don't think that's true. I did not see it. I was watching the football go away. I'll tell you, Shannon Thomas on the sidelines. What did you see on the punt? Uh, to be honest, guys, I didn't see it, so I'm going back to my video replay. <laughs> Shannon's got video replay on the sidelines as uh, the, the officials are talking about here what they're going to do. Didn't know it, realize it takes this long to, uh, to decide, out, decide what happens as the White Hat now talking to another official. Going to have running into running the kicker. Five yarders. Still five gonna be yard fourth penalty. And, one. and that's going to be uh, fourth down still for the Braves. Fourth and one now. Does that change your mindset? Maybe going for it? Uh, you, you might think about it now. You're, you're, in, you're in that territory. Um, it looks like they're going to line up in punting formation, but you got to remember you have Kinsey there as your up man. He's dangerous. So Sukosh back deep to return this punt from Colton Thomas. Got off a good one last time, even though he was ran into by one of the defenders from Steubenville. Little switch formation here out of the Braves. Two receivers here on the punt formation. It's going to be a, uh, a rugby-style kick by Colton Thomas. It's going to be high end over end. It's going to be fielded and fair caught at about the 36-yard line by Sukosh, and that's where Steubenville will take over, and that's the end of the first quarter here at St. Clairsville Division IV Region 15 Championship game. Steubenville leads 14-0 back with the second quarter. After this, you're listening to Big Z Sports right here on Z Country 99.9. At Kaufman Realty and Auctions, you've got options. Your property is unique, and our agents know how to sell it. Whether it's a traditional listing or live auction, we'll earn you top dollar. Our agents will utilize whichever method of sale works best. When buying or selling your next home, call on Kaufman. Welcome back to St. Clairsville High School. Beginning of the second quarter, Joe Geckler, Travis McClellan, Shannon Thomas for Big Z Sports. Big thanks back in the Hartzler's Quality Housing Studios for Nick McWilliams and Adam Sowesky. They did our pregame show and, of course, running things at the controls back in New Philadelphia. Here we have 14-0. Steubenville leads Indian Valley. Shotgun formation for Steubenville. They have it first and 10 at their own 37-yard line. Four wide receivers, two on each side of the field. Running back in the backfield with Fate, Fate and Hill. He flips it out here to his running back up here to the 40 to the near side. And he's finally shoved out of bounds. And that's going to be number 21 for Steubenville. And that's Tylick Sims on the reception. Going to bring up second down and about three. Yeah, Steubenville's run a stable of, of running backs in there. Uh, you know, we've seen three or four today, Joe. They want to keep them fresh. They want to run the football. Shotgun formation, two receivers again on each side of the field. Phaeton Hill takes a snap, fires over here to the near side, finds his receiver. That's going to be number six, Isaac Hill. And he's into Indian Valley territory for a first federal community bank first down. They, they got the first down there, uh, got, out, got out of bounds there. The Braves defense going to have to bow their backs here and get a stop. Going to be first and 10 now. I formation, two receivers on the far side, one here on the near side. Phaeton Hill under center with Bozica dotting the I. Kaijan Hopkins at fullback. The fake, Hill takes it. Now he fires over here to the near side, has his receiver. That's going to be Isaac Hill. 
and he's going to be shoved out of bounds at about the 25-yard line, and that's going to be another first Federal Community Bank first down. Yeah, just a little stick route out of him, Joe. Puts his foot in the ground, comes back, takes advantage of that cover three. That corner has got deep third, not letting anybody behind him. He sticks his foot in the ground, come back and gets it. Isaac Hill, 6'3", 205, catches the football, picks up the first down. We'll get to a scoreboard here in just a couple of moments. A Dino Pierglini and Sons scoreboard handoff to Bazika. Makes one guy miss, breaks out of a tackle, and almost takes it to the house as he is tripped up at about the 14-yard uh, the line. That's going to be Xavier Folks on the carry for the Big Red. Yeah, the Steubenville stretch there, Joe. They Everyone blocks the right areas, the right fullback leads. He cuts up inside him, gets big yards there, did Folks. Division four, region 16, Cincinnati, Wyoming, and Cincinnati Taft, no score in the second. West Branch leads Jefferson area, 18-0. Van Wert leads Glenville, 7-6 in the first. It's going to be a handoff up the middle and nowhere for the back to go for Steubenville. And Kirtland leads Mogador, 8-0 in the first. And Lucas leads Danville, 7-0 in the second. Jordan Hartzler covering that football game for us uh, between Lucas and Danville. Zach Motice covering Kirtland and Mogador for Big Z Sports. Big thanks to those guys. We'll get more scoreboards coming up here in just a moment. The last play, Steubenville went ISO there, Joe, but Quake Beatty, number 24, the linebacker there. Number, he's 5'8", 150, the junior. Nice in, knocks the pins out there for no gain. Nice play there by the middle backer. 10-28 to go here in the first half. Steubenville leads 14-0. They have it second down and about nine from the 18-yard line. Turn the hand out. Phaeton Hill's going to keep it. Rolls out. Takes off running, and he's going to be tripped up at about the 11-yard line, but falls forward to about the 8-yard line inside the Jeff Wallach LLC red zone. And that's going to bring up third down now for Steubenville. Quake Beatty did a great job there. He had the back out of the backfield on coverage, and he was out there in the flats, came off there and made the tackle while Hill tried to jump over him. High formation now. Hill under center. Up, oh, you got to have a jump. And that's going to be your left guard, Javen Harper. He did that earlier in the ball game, and he gets caught again with a false start. Well, they run that little fold trap out of him, Joe, where the, the right guard, right tackle, left guard, or left tackle folds back and then traps up in the A-gaps, and he started a little soon there. Third down in about nine now for Steubenville, all the way back to their, uh, looks like they're about their 13-yard line. Steubenville leads 14-0, 9.44 to go here in the first half. I formation receiver split to the far side, turns, fires out to Isaac Hill. Lowers his shoulder, gets shoved out of bounds. Going to be very close to a first down. Let's see where they mark him and see where he went out of bounds. Looks like he is going to be short of that. Going to bring up fourth down for Steubenville. Yeah, going to be fourth and short there. Fourth and about one and a half to two. And nice job there by the Braves defense, stringing the football out. A little toss out there to Hill. But the Braves defense was up to the task. Steubenville going to stay in. Looks like uh, they bring their big boys in. Ostovich checks in. Maybe very similar to like the diesel package that Garraway runs. They bring in a couple extra blockers. Chandler 50 that came in. Chandler Hoffman, he's only 180. Going to be a triple stacked eye. They're going to give it to Ostovich, and he breaks into the down close to the goal line inside the five-yard line down to the, about the three-yard line. And that's going to be enough for a first Federal Community Bank first down for Steubenville. Ostovich, that's his first carry today, Joe, but they did running back guy by committee last year. Ostovich got a pile of carries and powered up the yards there. And like we mentioned before, he's big boy. These big reds have two big running backs. Power oh, eye. Power eye formation receiver out. They're going to hand it to the up back, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown for the Steubenville big red. And that makes the score 20 to nothing. Number 10, Kai John Hopkins with a three-yard touchdown run for Steubenville. Just base blocking there out of Steubenville and uh, the quick hitter, the fullback out of the power eye, the first back through, right over right guard, and he punches it into the end zone. 9.07 to go here in the first half. Steubenville 20 and Indian Valley nothing as Cole Bowers now on for the extra point. The snap is going to be a fake. He's going to flip it out here to Bowers at the 10, at the 5, and he's going to be stopped short. And the two-point conversion is no good for Steubenville, and the score remains 20 
to nothing. Steubenville over Indian Valley with 9.07 to go here in the first half. Yeah. Timeout on the field, a Kaufman Realty timeout. We'll take it with them back after this with Big Z Sports. Kinsey Excavating and Trucking is a family-owned and operated business in New Philadelphia. KET is a general contractor. They provide services to commercial and municipal clients. They employ local union operators and laborers. KET is dedicated to providing outstanding work using the latest technology and employing local individuals to positively impact Tuscarawas County and the surrounding area. Kinsey Excavating and Trucking proudly supports the Indian Valley Local School District and wishes all area athletes, musicians, artists, and students a successful season. 99.9 WTUZ. Welcome back to St. Clairsville High School. Joe Geckler, Shannon Thomas, and Travis McClellan here at St. Clairsville High School. Steubenville leads 20 to nothing. We'll get a Dino Piergolini and Sons scoreboard update coming up here in just a moment after the Adams board kickoff. Steubenville scores on a three-yard touchdown run by Kai John, Hobinson, or Kai John uh, Hopkins just a moment ago. High end over end kick. Going to be fielded it at about the 20, then dropped on the turf, picks it back up, does the up man for Indian Valley, keeps running all the way out here to the 35-yard line, and that's where Indian Valley will take over. First and 10, trailing 35 to nothing. Yeah, Smart job there by when he dropped the football, not have his knees down when he picked it up and uh, picked up good yardage there. He's up over the 30-yard line to about the 32-33. Another Dino Piergolini and Sons equipment scoreboard update. Our score here, 20 to nothing. Steubenville leads Indian Valley. Wyoming and Taft in Cincinnati are knotted at zero. West Branch up 18-0 on Jefferson area. Van Wert leads Glenville 7-6. Kirtland leads Mogador 8-0. And Lucas leads Danville 7-0 in the second quarter. Here we have 20 to nothing, Steubenville over Indian Valley. Joe Geckler, Travis McClellan, Shannon Thomas on the sidelines tonight for Big Z Sports. The Braves now going right to left on your radio dial. Receiver here on the near side, they're gonna fake it. Colton Thomas takes a snap, gonna throw a fade route to his receiver way out of bounds. And that's gonna bring up second down for Indian Valley. Tried to throw the streak there. Unfortunately, uh, went out of bounds there for Colton Thomas. But, you know, you like him to see him to stretch the field. That's the first time we've seen the Braves stretch the field vertically there. And that may loosen up some stuff underneath. Looks like the ball sailed on Colton a little bit there. The wind uh, looks like it's going from our sideline here on the home sideline across the field. May have pushed that ball out of bounds a little bit. Kind of blowing the American flag almost uh, standing straight out on the pole to our right. Two receivers here on the near side, one on the far side, two backs in the backfield with Colton Thomas. It's going to be a run pass option, and he completes it out here to Kinsey, and he's going to get dropped just short of the 40-yard line, about the 38-yard line, going to bring up third down for Indian Valley. Yeah, that was that. Gavin Henry there. It's an RPO where Colton Thomas can run off left tackle, or Henry stays right there. If they bite, come off Henry to uh, contain, he flicks it out there. Nice play there by the Braves. And picks up a nice yardage on second down there. It's going to be second down and about five. Third and third five. five third, and, third and five for Indian Valley. 8.23 to go here in the second quarter. Steubenville 20, Indian Valley nothing. Receiver now two receivers on the far side. Pistol formation. Kinsey in the backfield with Thomas. The hand is to Kinsey. Nope, Colton Thomas is going to keep it. And he's going to get dropped right about the line of scrimmage. Maybe picked up a yard. Going to bring up fourth down. That looked like uh, number 11, Brody Sukosh there on the stop for the Big Red. Came down the line of scrimmage to make the stop. Going to be fourth down. So going to be a fourth down and four for Indian Valley. Colton Thomas back to, re, uh, to punt the football away. Looks like number five is back deep to return this kick, and that's going to be Brody Sukosh. It's going to be a low line drive kick. And it takes a bounce as he fields it at about the 27-yard line. Took a hop. He called for a fair catch, but it took a hop. Yeah, I had Brody there uh, as 11 on my roster, Joe, but he's wearing five tonight, I believe. Yeah, I had him as five on my sheet that was sent to me earlier this week, but the uh, the sheet here has him as 11. Who knows? Yeah, I'm looking at the official OHSA uh, program there. has him as 11, but uh, he's five, so we're going to go with that. 
So Steubenville has the football first and 10 at their own 28-yard line, leading 20 to nothing with 7.33 to go here in the first half. Receiver on the far side and here on the near side. Back, two backs in the backfield. Going to have a uh, flag thrown. It's going to be a false start on the Steubenville Big Red. Going to back them up five yards. Yeah, that's a lot of early penalties here for the Big Red, and uh, that's probably their sixth or seventh penalty so far. Week number 14 of the high school football season for Big Z Sports. Joe Geckler, Travis McClellan, and Shannon Thomas on the sidelines for us here tonight. Nick McWilliams, Adam Sawesky in the Hartzler's Quality Housing Studios back at the station. Receiver here on the near side and on the far side going to be a handoff. It's going to be a fly, fumble. It looks like Indian Valley is going to have it. A bad snap and a bad handle there by between the quarterback and the running back. And it looks like Indian Valley fell on the fumble and recovered it with their best field position of the night, Travis. Yeah, that was a nice play there by the defensive line. It looked like 60 for the uh, Braves. That's Braden Parsons jumps on that snap. They're in position here. The Braves got to take advantage of this opportunity, Joe. Head down to the sidelines real quick with Shannon Thomas. Shannon looks like it's a bad exchange between the quarterback and running back. Yeah, actually it was a little bit of a bad snap. And the running back and quarterback ran into each other, so I don't know they were on the same page. Owen Fockler now at quarterback, eye formation, two receivers here on the near side. They're going to turn and hand it off. Another penalty flag comes in as the side judge getting his workout tonight, throwing flags each side of the line of scrimmage. Going to be against Indian Valley, going to back them up. False start again there, and uh, the Braves had some cooking, four or five-yard gain, six-yard gain. Going to be negated by the penalty. It's going to be first and 15. I didn't see a false start. Did you see anything on that? Maybe a legal shift? A false start would have stopped I the was, play. Sorry, Joe. I was blocked by the post there. Yeah, I think we are all blocked by the post here tonight as uh, we uh, go back and forth between windows, uh, calling plays here tonight in a press box. That's pretty full here at St. Clairsville High School. First down and 15 now from about the 20. Seven-yard line for Indian Valley. Shotgun formation, two rece oh, one receiver on the far side. Now two with Gavin Henry going in motion. Colton Thomas going to keep it right up the middle to the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Colton Thomas from 27 yards out. And the Indian Valley Braves have cut into the lead now, trailing 20-6 to six to Steubenville. Thomas creased him there, Joe. They spread him out wide and actually free safety number five. Brody Sukosh went way out wide into the slot, tried to make it back into the field. Colton Thomas fakes the handoff, goes up the middle, beats him to the end zone. Touchdown, Braves. Number seven is dangerous for Indian Valley at quarterback as he takes it 27 to the house against Steubenville here. Now the kick by Daniel Miller it is up and good. And now Steubenville only leads 20 to seven, just under seven minutes to go here in the first half. Timeout on the field, we'll take it with them. Back after this with Big Z Sports. The certified public accountants at Moore and Edenthal Incorporated believe in the value of relationships. Moore and Edenthal has been in business for over 40 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Moore and Edenthal can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the new Moore and Edenthal facility on North Worcester Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. on Big Z Sports and 99.9 WTUZ. 20 to seven, Steubenville leads Indian Valley, 6.56 to go. Indian Valley scores on a 27 yard touchdown run by Colton Thomas after recovering a fumble by Steubenville. Just a couple of plays earlier, Travis. That was a big, big play for Indian Valley. That's exactly what you needed and that's what the doctor ordered. They get the big turnover in, the, in Steubenville's end. Two plays later, they're in the end zone. Touchdown, Braves. You're back in this football game. So the Braves going to kick it off now to a couple of returners for Steubenville. The ball's teed up at the 40. Daniel Miller gets his leg a high end over and kick and a bounce. That's a live football, and it goes into the end zone. Going to be a touchback for the Steubenville Big Red. They'll take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard 20, uh, 20 line down to the sidelines, and Shannon Thomas and Shannon what a great job by Colton Thomas right up the heart and outran the defenders to the end zone. Yeah, he did a nice job finding the hole right there. Offensive line did a good job right there getting to their blocks, holding the blocks. He's able to find the seam and turn on a little bit of jets that he has or scoot into the end zone. Shannon, did he get his jets from you? 
Nah, I drive everywhere I go. <laughs> Shotgun formation. Two receivers here on the near side, two on the far side. Hill in the shotgun with his back. Fires it over here to the near side. That's going to be Folks. Oh, no, that's Sims out here to the 40, to the 45. Races defenders. Got one man to beat. Colton Thomas drags him down at about the 20-yard line. Or Tylek Sims would have had a touchdown on the swing pass, but Colton Thomas there to track him down. Yeah, Colton Thomas, the junior free safety, the last line of defense there, took a great angle there, jumps on his back and jumps on Sims' back, get him to the ground. Tylek Sims, six foot, 196 pounds, as he's listed on the program here for Steubenville. So, Phaeton Hill, the quarterback, nice-looking quarterback, lefty, so they roll him out a lot left-handed, uh, which, is, which is nice for him. It's an easy throw going, going to his left. Eye formation now, receiver on the far side, and we're going to have a false penalty start. flag. It's going to be another false start, this time again, number three, uh, 73, Javen Harper. That's the third one of the, of the half. Yeah, him. he moved early there, and, uh, you know, when they're going to run that fold trap where they pull him out and he traps there up middle, he's trying to get moving early. They're trying to time the snap, Joe, and just moving just a hair early, and the umpire says that's five. And we just got another a penalty flag. flag. It's going to be a sideline side warning against Steubenville. And uh, they did call a timeout on the field. We'll take it with them, a 30-second timeout, a Kaufman Realty timeout. Back after this, you're listening to Big Z Sports right here on Z Country 99.9. Fall brings cool evenings, football games, and weekend camping. Muskingum Watershed Conservancy District has the perfect way to recharge after a long week at work. A place to sit around a campfire making s'mores and relax as you watch the snapping and flickering flames dancing under the moonlight. Choose a campsite at Atwood or Tappan Lake Park for your fall weekend getaways. Camping is the perfect way to spend an evening under the stars with family and friends. Reserve your campsite now at mwcd.org. I don't want to harp if on it, it's though, a big you know. game, it's on Big Z Sports and 99.9 Z Country. Welcome back to St. Clairsville High School. First and 15 now for Steubenville. Eye formation, two, uh, two receivers on the far side. Folks dotting the eye for the Big Red. Receiver here on the near side as well, and that's Sims. They're going to hand off to Folks, and he's going to get dropped. Maybe a yard gain, two-yard gain off the far sideline or off the far side of that offensive line going away from us. Pickup of about two, maybe three. Going to bring up second down and about 12. Yeah, running stretch. Off tackle left there. Picks up two yards or lost two. Shotgun formation now. Two receivers here on the near side, two on the far side with folks in the backfield with Phaeton Hill, the quarterback for the Big Red. Now he looks, gets his call he wants, fires here to the near sideline, has his receiver. That's going to be Isaac Sims. Breaks out of a tackle and gets shoved out of bounds at around the 10-yard line. Isaac Hill with the reception. That's going to bring up third down now for Steubenville. Third and more, uh, more like two or three. Yeah, they like that stick route there out of Smith where he fakes that nine route, sticks his foot in the ground, and he values in cover three, so he knows he doesn't want to get beat deep, beat deep in that soft zone. Takes advantage of it, uh, breaks the tackle from Brogan Bircher, picks up a few more short of the first down. So it's going to bring uh, bring up third down and two now for Steubenville inside the Jeff Wallach LLC red zone. Indian Valley has a guy checked out because of uh, an equipment issue. The official stopped it. Now the other official is talking, not paying attention to what's going on. Now runs back into position as they line up. The White Hat stops it. Now uh, we are back underway with the twirl of the arm by the White Hat. Third down and two for Steubenville. Eye formation receiver on the far side. Folks, now re receiver goes in motion. They're going to throw the fade route into the end zone and it is going to be incomplete. They tried the fade to the end zone and come up short as it looks like number, is that number three? Number, I can't tell the number, number zero for the. Num number eight, Joe. Number eight, that would have been. We don't have that on our roster, Joe. Yeah, number eight, uh, I don't know who number Joe eight Keckler. is. Yeah, I don't know who number eight Shannon is. Shannon Thomas. I'll have to get an updated roster. Uh, <laughs> they tried to run the fade there, Joe, and uh, Gavin Henry did a nice job of knocking that football out at the last minute. Handoff up the middle, and it's going to be very close to the first down. Let's see where they stop. They spot him. 
Let's see what it's going to be called. It was fourth and two. He jumped the pile there, Joe. Going to be, depends let's on see, if it's a right or left foot they spot. Got. That's going to be fourth down. Or no, that's going to be, uh, that should be a turnover on downs. Are they giving them the first down? They are giving them the first down. I thought he was he was well short of that, but uh, they Coach gave Coach Lancaster, him. I at least want a measurement, Joe. Guy, guys, I was standing right here at the line. That ball was a yard behind the stick. They called it. They called it. I'm standing right here. Uh -huh. I wouldn't lie to anybody. I see Shannon right down there, right down the line of scrimmage He's there. On the looking right side. over the uh, right shoulder of the side judge. And uh, if Shannon says it was short, it was short. As Phaeton Hill's going to fire it out to the far sideline, that's going to be Isaac Hill. It gets gang tackled about the 10, dragging a couple of defenders for Indian Valley inside the 10 yard line. And uh, Indian Valley uh, looks like Steubenville has a player down now, laying face down over on the 10 yard line. And there is a timeout oh, on the field. Uh, I don't think so. It looks like he has a red jersey. Shannon, can you help us out oh, with the number? Brave. That's 32, Joe. That's Remy Myers. Remy Myers. I couldn't tell he had a, uh, a white jersey on. It looks red from up here. My eyes aren't working very well. <laughs> the Remy Myers, he was out there on the stop with uh, the corner there, and uh, unfortunately he's down on the turf. Hope the young man's okay. Shannon, did you see what happened when he went down? Did he go down to Awkward? Guys, from where I'm standing at, I think it might be one of those injuries that guys don't like. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Well, that, that, that'll be a... Uh, that, that'll be a painful one, especially in the cold. That should be a penalty contact below the waist. I know, right? <laughs> those, those penalties are, or those uh, injuries are no fun. Yeah, nice uh, to see him getting yeah. up and uh, moving along, and it's not serious. He is uh, taking his time over on the sidelines, as he should. And that'll that's be second down and goal, Joe. Second and goal inside the Jeff Wallach LLC red zone for the Steubenville Big Red leading 20-7 to over Indian Valley with 4.34 to go here in the first half. I formation, receiver here on the near side, that's Isaac Hill. Now receiver goes here in motion. They turn and hand off. Cuts it outside to the 10, to the 5, and he's going to be brought down short of the goal line. That's Savior Folks as he is dropped short of the goal line. Going to bring up third down and goal from about the one. Yeah, toss sweep here to the far, to the near side here, Joe, and uh, he gets outside, puts his foot into the ground, puts his shoulders down, get it to the one yard line there. Coming up at halftime, our first National Bank of Denison halftime report. The guys in the studio, Nick McWilliams and Adam Sowesky, will uh, probably talk to a couple of our guys uh, covering games for us here tonight and, of course, go over a wild day in college football. Going to hand the ball to Ostevich. And he is going to be submarine right at the line of scrimmage. And I think he's going to be short. That's going to bring up fourth down and goal for Steubenville. Really nice play there by the Braves defense. Low man wins here on the goal line. And that's exactly what happened. It looked like it was number one for the Braves. That was Colson, Reese Colson there on the stop. He got low. And uh, submarine Ostovich there at the one. Full house backfield or power eye formation. Ostovich dots that eye. They're going to hand to the fullback into the end zone. Touchdown. And that looks like that was number 10, Kai John Hopkins. That was 16, it was Joe. Was it 16? Yep. Zach 10 and Smith. 16, Zach Smith. We're a distance from the field. We have an eight-lane track in front of us. We're a little ways from the field. I apologize for that. That was Zach Smith on the touchdown run for Steubenville. Now 26-7, they lead Indian Valley here with 3.21 to go in the first half. Steubenville goes to that power eye, Joe. They like to give it to that up back. That's the second time they've given it to Smith for the touchdown. They're going to go for two is Steubenville. Two receivers here on the near side. One on the far side now goes in motion. They're going to do a jet sweep. And he is uh, going to get into the end zone for the two-point conversion. That's number 15, Highcomb Edwards. And that makes the score 28 to 7. Steubenville with 3.21 to go. First half timeout on the field. Back after this with Big Z Sports. PAC Drilling, a family owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PackDrilling.com. Joe Geckler 
Travis McClellan, Shannon Thomas on the sidelines tonight for Big Z Sports. Lydia Brady and her crew here with Claxton Communications. You can check out the live stream at 10 o'clock tonight uh, per OHSAA guidelines and rules. Since Spectrum TV is here tonight, we cannot live stream. They have the rights to it, unfortunately. But we are going to provide the live stream in a tape delay if you want to go back and watch this game in its entirety here tonight. 28-7, Steubenville leads 3-21 to go here in the first half. Going to be a high end over end kick. Adams board kickoff. Indian Valley brings it here to the near side. That's Colton Thomas. Breaks out of a tackle. Spins out of another one up to the, about the 36-yard line. And that's where Indian Valley will take over. Trailing 28-7. Yeah, Colton Thomas is second. Uh, good return on a kickoff there. Gets him up uh, almost uh, about the 37-yard line in business here. And uh, three 314 to go. Plenty of time for the Braves. Need to stick one in the end zone. If you remember, they deferred. They'll get the ball coming out from the half. Get a touchdown before half here. Get the football back, and uh, we would have a football game. Owen Fockler now at quarterback for the Braves. Turns and hands to Grady Kenzie, and he gets nowhere as he's going to be dropped about a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Steubenville stacking the box there, and uh, just not a lot of room to work there for the Braves offense. Second down and 11 for Indian Valley. Under three minutes to go here in the first half. 28 to seven, Steubenville leads Indian Valley here at St. Clairsville. Division four, region 15, regional finals. I formation, turn again. They hand to Kenzie here to the near side, gets tripped up. He had a lot of green space here on the near sideline, and the defender, Zach Smith, was in there to trip him up, or he might have picked up a uh, bunch of yards for Indian Valley. Yeah, Steubenville with nine in the box there, comes inside out, does Smith, and trips up Kinsey before he could get to the corner. They went man-to-man -man on the outside. They had one safety and nine in the box. Third down and 10 now for Indian Valley, coming up on two minutes and nine seconds to go here in the first half. Steubenville leads... 28 to 7. Two receivers on the far side. One here on the near side. Shotgun formation. Colton Thomas takes a snap. Rolls to the far sideline. Fakes it. Now pumps it. Now throws it over to the far sideline. Out of bounds. And incomplete. And that's going to bring up fourth down for Indian Valley. Yeah, fourth down. They're going to have to put the football away. The offensive line gave Thomas time there, Joe. He rolled right to the boundary. Not a lot of room to work over there. Just couldn't get open. Had to throw it away. Fourth down and 10 from their own 37-yard line. Colton Thomas, the punter for the Braves. Number five, Brody Suckosh back to return the kick. The grandson of Reno. Low line drive kick. Nice Going to take an Indian, uh, Indian Valley bounce Go all the way it. down into the uh, – wow, down inside the five. Keep on rolling. And it's going to get down to about the two-yard line. Big-time roll for the Indian Valley Braves on the punt there off the leg of Colton Thomas. Not much air on that punt, Joe, but in this cold night there, the line drive and a hit and keep, kept rolling, stayed in bounds. Beautiful directional punt there. Gets down inside the five-yard line. A minute 40 to go here in the first half. Steubenville leads 28-7 over Indian Valley. Of course, coming up here in just a few minutes, our first National Bank of Denison halftime report and a timeout on the field taken by Indian Valley. We'll keep it right here. We're going to head down to the sidelines and chat with Shannon Thomas. And Shannon, what a uh, what a huge role there on the punt and uh, back Steubenville way up in their own territory. Yeah, that, that's one of the few things that's went right here in the first half for the Braves. They just got to they got to make some big time offense adjustments here at halftime. I look for uh, Steubenville maybe to take a shot deep right here with Hill. If you're uh, in that huddle for Indian Valley, Shannon, what are you uh, saying to your ball club here? Uh, you know, don't give up the big play, right? Yeah, you don't want to give up the big play. You got you got to watch for the run because their their running backs are so good they could try to delay handoff something right here. You go a long way, but they've had some success throwing the ball right here. So. I, I think you got to get up in their face right here at the line of scrimmage and try to just get them off the routes a little bit. I don't know if maybe make an adjustment. You know, Rogan Bircher's been playing banged up this year. Maybe pull him off, move him to safety, put Colton Thomas over on their best wide receiver. But, you know, I, I don't watch the game film, so I, I can't really give an educated answer. 
That trip to the sidelines brought to you by Dr. Nathan Springer. Come out in an I formation receiver on each side of the field. Now goes in motion. Going to turn and hand off to, looks like Folks, and he's all the way out past the five to maybe the eight yard line. That's going to be actually Tylex Sims. Can't really tell the number from up here. 21 24 looks very uh, similar. 24, you had it right, Joe. Was it Folks? Folks yep. yep. Uh, Xavier Folks. You know, I think what the plan there from Reno was, if they could get big yards on first down, they probably would take a shot here. But they came out in a power formation, ran the football. I formation again, receiver here on the near side. One goes in motion now here. Two, two receivers going to hand it off. Nice jump cut at the line of scrimmage. Gets out past the 10, up close to the 15-yard line. That's going to be enough for a first Federal Community Bank first down for Steubenville. Yeah, a little stretch there off right tackle. He made a nice jump cut inside and uh, picks up enough for the first down and they're going to go quick here Joe with under a minute to go 28 to 7 Steubenville leads Indian Valley 51 seconds to go here in the first half I formation receiver here on the near side now goes in motion to the far side going to fake the handoff Phaeton Hill drops back fires over the middle field has his receiver and it's going to be incomplete knocked away by number 34 Brogan Bircher also on the coverage Colton Thomas Bircher did a nice job to undercut that route and knock that football yeah, away. Yeah, a little bracket coverage. Thomas, the safety, is deep as the deepest and played in center field. He was over the top. Bircher folds underneath there on the uh, go route, tips the football away at the last minute. Isaac Hill was the intended receiver for Steubenville. He goes 6'3", 210, and he's a junior. Of course, Brogan Bircher and Colton Thomas had him blanketed. Going to bring up second down now for Steubenville. Isaac Hill goes split out to the far side. They're going to turn and hand it off to Folks off the left side. Out to the 20. Cuts to the far sideline. He gets shoved out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. That's going to be enough for a first Federal Community Bank first down. Folks there goes off left tackle, bounces it out to the outside, and Gavin Henry, 27, bumps him out of bounds, not before he picks up the first down. It's 30 seconds to go. Steubenville does have one timeout, Joe. Hockey subs here out of the Big Reds. They went a uh, whole, whole, whole line substitution. Trips receivers here on the near side. One on the far side. Phaeton Hill in the shotgun. Is that number? Who's that, who's that tail back there? Is that 20? Looks like 20, 32 maybe. Phaeton Hill going to be a little bubble screen to the far sideline. Has his receiver. And he's going to be dropped at about the 37-yard line. That's enough for another first Federal Community Bank. First down. Stops the clock for the chain. Trips to the field. Single there. They went jailbreak screen. Trips again here to the near side. They're going to flip it out here to, to, to their running back on a swing. And that's going to be number 23 for Steubenville. And that's Gavin Basica as he catches it and moves it all the way up to his own 45-yard line. 13.6 seconds to go. Second down. Going to be a timeout on the field taken by Steubenville. We'll keep it right here. They ran uh, bubble screen there, Joe, and Remy Myers comes out and makes a shoestring tackle to save a touchdown. I think Busica would have maybe taken that uh, here to the near sideline and had a couple guys to beat, but his he was going downhill. A Ferris Chevrolet scoreboard update now. Wyoming and Taft in Cincinnati at the half, tied at zero. West Branch in Jefferson area, 18-13 West Branch in the first quarter. Glenville. They trail Van Wert 21-12. Kirtland leads Mogador 30 to nothing at the half. And Danville and Lucas tied at seven at the half. Here we have 28 to seven. Steubenville leads Indian Valley with 13 seconds to go here in the first half. Five wide receivers, shotgun formation, three to the far side, two here. On the near side, Phaeton Hill at quarterback for the Big Red. Turns and looks to his sideline, now gets the play, takes a snap, looking, fires here to the near sideline, has his intended receiver, and he gets shoved out of Ooh, bounds. Nice shot. Big time hit there by number 60. Braden Parsons on Braden the shot. Braden Parsons uh, lowered the boom out of bounds right at midfield. The Big Red faithful here in front of us didn't like it, Joe. That was a legal hit, hard physical football, knocks him out of bounds. Their receiver was still two or three feet inbounds, unlike Colton Thomas was uh, three or four feet out of bounds earlier in the first quarter. 28-7, to seven, Steubenville leads Indian Valley with nine seconds to go here in the first half. 
Three to the far side, one here on the near side. Hill takes a snap, fires here to the near side, has his intended receiver, and that's going to be Isaac Hill. He's going to be out of bounds with about three seconds to go, and that's going to be enough for a first Federal Community Bank first down for Steubenville. They're in with chucking territory here, Joe. Ball at the, about the 34, and they can reach the end zone from here. They're going to have one play, probably a, maybe a jump ball fade, something of that nature to Hill. Three receivers on the far sideline, two here on the near side. Shotgun formation for Phaeton Hill, the quarterback, 6'2", 180-pound senior. Quarters coverage for the Braves with Colton Thomas deep. Takes a snap, drops back, rolls here to the near side, fires it over here on the near side, wobbly throw into the end zone, and that's going to be picked off by the Indian Valley Braves, and that will do it here for the first half as Indian Valley trails Steubenville 28-7 as Indian Valley was able to intercept. Oh, there is a flag way back here at the 42-yard line. That's going to be a hold, and that will be declined and the end of the first half. And again, Steubenville leads 28 to seven over Indian Valley. And coming up next, our first National Bank of Denison halftime report. After this, you listen to Big Z Sports right here on Z Country 99.9. The First National Bank, this is Carly Mills. At First Federal Community Bank, our mission is to empower the financial well-being of our community one person at a time. Through integrity and quality, we earn the trust of our customers and exceed their expectations. First Federal Community Bank, investing in our community since 1898. Serving your banking needs in Dover, New Philadelphia, Eurexville, Sugar Creek, Berlin, and Mount Hope. First Federal Community Bank, member FDIC. How does a new career in an extremely high demand field sound to you? Well, the former crane carrier company in New Philadelphia is now Battle Motors. Battle Motors is expanding rapidly for their all-new heavy-duty electric truck production. Battle Motors has immediate openings for assemblers, electrical technicians, painters, blasters, as well as numerous engineering and design positions. If you're interested in a great career opportunity, apply online at battlemotors.com backslash careers. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling a residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all of these communities, there is nothing better than high school football. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season. And make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD. Based on a foundation of trust and integrity, Jeff Wallach LLC is a family-owned and operated company proudly serving the greater Northeast Ohio and surrounding communities with experience in residential and commercial projects. The pursuit of quality workmanship and commitment to superior customer service has positioned Jeff Wallach LLC as a respected installer of seamless siding, spouting, and replacement windows and doors for more than 25 years. Turn your vision into a reality by visiting jeffwallachllc.com. With the colder fall weather here, that means deer are running all over roadways. If you have the misfortune of hitting a deer, the place to go is Gillen Body Shop in New Philadelphia. Gillen Body Shop and their 90 plus years of experience can get your vehicle back to you quickly and efficiently. And all repairs include a 100% lifetime guarantee. For any and all auto body work repairs to be done right the first time, get to Gillen Body Shop in New Philadelphia. Learn more about Gillen Body Shop when you find them on Facebook. The Lehigh Inslee Insurance Agency is proud to be a part of this high school sports broadcast. We support the student athletes on the team and the students in all extracurricular activities. Hi, I'm Todd Inslee. In fact, your good student may qualify for discounted auto insurance rates from companies like Encova Insurance. Encova Insurance can provide you with homeowner's insurance and life insurance too. Insure both of us and save even more. For a no-obligation quote, call the Lehigh Inslee Insurance Agency with locations in New Philadelphia and Eurexville. Busy schedule? Check out Benson's Heat and Eat section with a variety of entrees and sides for you to choose from. And don't forget, Monday through Friday from 4 to 6, Benson's culinary team prepares hot made-from-scratch dinners complete with garden salad and bread and butter. Just call ahead to order. For daily and weekly specials, visit bensonsmc.com. Follow them on Facebook or stop into the market. Benson's Market and Catering, 207 North Worcester Avenue in Dover. 
The Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers want you to know that low-fat chocolate milk is a great choice for student-athletes and hard workers. It provides the nutrition needed after practices, games, or a hard day at work, and it tastes great. Low-fat chocolate milk is packed with carbohydrates for energy, proteins to repair muscles, fluids to rehydrate, plus vitamins and minerals to help build strong bones and bodies. It's the official beverage of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers. Farms. Family. Food. Tonight at 99.9 FM for our, I'd say, featured game, Adam, but our only game we've got left on the docket as the Indian Valley Braves trail the Steubenville Big Red 28-7 to in that regional final matchup. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, hearing it here throughout that entire first half, what we talked about in the pregame was that uh, Indian Valley really needed to kind of dictate the pace of this game. Unfortunately for them so far, and unfortunately for Braves fans, that has just not been the case. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with the, you know, with the Braves, they got the... The one score that was actually off of a, a Steubenville miscue, uh, the botch the, looked like a sounded like a bad handoff, um, and then uh, but they were able to capitalize there. And another big thing there at the end of the first half, not allowing Steubenville to get another score on the board there in that last minute. So that was a good hold for the Braves because they will start the second half with the ball. You, you don't want to th- say it's because there's a whole half to play. You don't want to say it's a must score situation. But it's kind of a must-score situation with that first drive coming out of the locker room. It's about as close as you can get for a first-half situation, a must-score situation coming out of the first half. And, you know, that it, it, looking back in retrospect, and that's rarely wrong, but uh, the fact that you are getting the second-half kickoff, I mean, there's, there's no reason to believe, in my opinion right now, you know, down by three scores against a team like Steubenville, it sounds you know, pretty rough, and it, it, it sounds like this could be uh, a very long rest of the night for the Braves, but really, we're talking about a game here in a situation where if you go down and you score on your opening drive and all of a sudden get a stop on big on the Big Reds' next drive, it kind of becomes a whole new ball game. It, it really does, because like I said, that's why that first score is so crucial coming out of the, out of the locker room, because then you cut it to a two-score game, then yes, you know, you, you kind of get the get that momentum swing, you get your defense out on the field. They they the Braves have shown signs in the first half that they can they can stop Steubenville. Mm-hmm. Steubenville unfortunately was going forward on fourth down a couple times where most teams would not. But I think that uh, you know that could be confidence of the big red coming into this game, feeling like, you know, if it's fourth and three or less, we're we're gonna roll the dice. And you know, and Travis McClellan mentioned that Sometimes in playoff games, you roll the dice, and so far they're two for two. Well, and we're not going to say that uh, Steubenville, you know, doesn't know how to roll the dice and know how to gamble, and, you know, they will take risks. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, at least our analysis for that first half in review. Again, Steubenville leads Indian Valley 29-7 to in a Division Four Region 15 regional final. But uh, speaking of the uh, high school football playoffs, we do have a Auto Works Collision Center scoreboard update, Adam. Uh, some of these games, obviously, uh, will have a direct impact whenever it comes to the winner of tonight's game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in Division Four, Region 16, we're not sure if these teams got off the bus yet, but the game <laughs> is at the half. Cincinnati, Wyoming, and Cincinnati, Taft, they're still knotted at zero. So, you know, offense optional. Yeah, I I believe so. I believe so. It must be two really good defenses. Um, Division four region. I'm sorry. I just did that one. Division four region 13 West Branch. They lead Jefferson area 24 to 13. That game is just about at the half. Division four region 14 Van Wert. They lead Glenville 21 to 20. That game is at the half. Kirtland all over Mogador 30 to nothing. And that's in the division six region 21. Uh, so it looks like Kirtland is doing what Kirtland does. And the game out here at Woody Hayes Quaker Stadium in Division 7, Region 25, Lucas, they they are all knotted up with Danville, 7-7 seven to seven at the half. Uh, that was a late score there by Danville to even things up. And before we talk about the games that, you know, I guess are more important because of tonight's broadcast, I really want to bring back attention to that Lucas-Danville game. I mean, I, I get it. A lot of people listening are like, well, why do we care about that? Of course, happening really in our backyard with Woody Hayes Quaker Stadium. But it, it's got to be one of the more fun stories, in my opinion, whenever it comes to all of the, the high school football playoffs. A 10 seed in Lucas went 6-6 six and six this season, and they are still finding a way. And Danville is no team to joke about whenever we're talking about D7. I mean, it, it's great to see, but sometimes those uh, lower division games, they get really 
uh, interesting. I'll yeah, well, I used to go to almost it was religiously. I would go to with uh, with my dad. We'd go to all the state championship games, mm-hmm. and that was one that we never wanted to miss. We you know, we always wanted to be there in the morning for the Division Seven, and then the next day on the Division Six games. Those were usually the best games of the day, without a doubt. I mean, those teams just leave it all on the field. Jordan Hartzler is actually out there uh, reporting on that game for us, and he said that Danville, or I'm sorry, that Lucas has twice as many players as Danville does. Isn't that weird? It really is. For, you don't expect that, of course, the way divisions work, but I guess maybe one school having more draw for football than the other. Yeah, exactly. And, and to see, and I, cause I, my message to him was, so it's a, it's a true – David versus Goliath, yeah. and he said absolutely. So, you know, way all the game he's seeing out there at Woody Hayes. Absolutely. Now, we'll try to explain this as best as we can because this is where things get confusing. I'll, I'll let again. you do it this time because I was all over the place. Well, when I mess this up, go ahead and laugh. As I, I Pardon me if you hear me moving the mic. I have to lean over here because I, I need to read the full instructions, <laughs> so to speak. So tonight, between Steubenville and Indian Valley, the winner of this game will move on into the state final four now you'd be thinking well who could they possibly be taking on well that all matters with glenville and van Wert because of geographical purposes uh it will determine who plays where and all that good fun stuff so with a glenville win steubenville indian valley winner will be taking on the winner of wyoming and taft as we mentioned that game nothing nothing at the half defensive battle now if van Wert knocks off glenville as a, a heavy underdog although they do lead by one at the half they will then be taking on the winner of West Branch, Ojoy, and Jefferson Area. That game, only an 11-point game here right before halftime. Jefferson Area doing a nice job against the, I think it's Warriors, West Branch. I think it's Warriors. Yeah, it is Warriors. Okay. Yep. So, and the reason for that, I got approached by this by a couple people throughout this week and said, look, man, I don't actually know. And Joe Geckler actually clarified it for us and said it's for geographical purposes, which makes sense. And, um... You know, you think it'd almost be easier to schedule these games when you have less teams playing this deep in the playoffs. It somehow doesn't become easier. No, it, and it's, it's funny because they, they kind of take the geographical, try to have the neutral site geographical thing all make sense when it comes to the state semi, state semi, the, the, the final four. Though there's been a lot of instances since uh, week three of the playoffs that don't seem like they match up real evenly for distance travel you know we've ran into a lot of situations with teams locally that uh kind of were on the the wrong side of that fence uh but it looks like the state tries to do their part we do know that if van Wert wins the winner of this game that game will be played in east liverpool yes and if uh glenville would win the game would be then played at columbus crew stadium in columbus did you follow all that, everybody listening? Because <laughs> we still have a hard time figuring it out. Anyway, that's enough with the uh, the specific playoff t- or the playoff talk as a whole. We will uh, go ahead and take a first break for our first National Bank of Denison halftime report. When we come back, Adam, you and I will be talking a little bit about our analysis, our takeaways from that first half of this Division Four Region 15 Regional Final. Don't go anywhere. Our halftime report rolls on after this. All of the talks we've had over the years, including what you told me about not using alcohol and other drugs, they stick with me. And believe it or not, they really do make a difference, especially at times that matter most. Hey, want a drink? No thanks. I'm good. So thank you, Mom and Dad, for talking with me and preparing me for what's ahead. Thank you for talking. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, and to learn more about the SAMHSA Talk to Hear You campaign, visit EmpowerTusk.com. The Alcohol, Drug Addiction, and Mental Health Services Board of Tuscarawas in Carroll Counties is an agency established for the purpose of planning, funding, monitoring, and evaluating contracted mental health, alcohol, and drug treatment services. Services across four local agencies are available for county residents regardless of ability to pay. Mental health and physical health are connected, and taking care of both is a requirement for your well-being. Go to adamhtc.org for more information. Adams Board, supporting your journey to wellness. Pizza Parlor 5 in Sugar Creek satisfies the hunger you have inside. Try their Parlor Sub. It's made to order with ham, pepperoni, lettuce, onions, tomatoes, banana peppers with a special blend of provolone cheese and Pizza Parlor's homemade Italian dressing on a fresh bun baked to perfection. Try their ATM pizza that has all the meat, pepperoni, sausage, ham, and bacon. Pizza Parlor 5 Sugar Creek, 330-852-4888. 
Jackie P. Photography understands there are many life moments that occur, and having pictures of those events is very important and shouldn't break the bank to have them. Jackie P. offers quality professional photography at an affordable price and offers services for weddings, engagements, family, senior pictures, plus any other special time in your life. To see just what Jackie P. can offer, find her on Facebook and follow on Instagram. To capture those special moments at an affordable price, visit JackiePPhotography.com. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in Sugar Creek, Strasburg, and downtown New Philadelphia, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this fall. Back to the First National Bank of Denison Halftime Report. Nick McWilliams, Adam Sawesky here. A few moments away from sending it back over, did it again, down to St. Clairsville between Indian Valley and Steubenville. I'm going to get it right at some point tonight, Adam. Don't you laugh over there. Of course, uh, Steubenville leads this one 28-7 over Indian Valley. Uh, we talked a little bit when we came into our halftime report, Adam, about uh, you know the Braves struggling a little bit to dictate this game, that being part of the problem. I, I really am interested in your take, though, on, uh, you know, we've heard a lot about Colton Thomas going back to pass, and it almost seems like maybe being behind by the three scores, they kind of feel pressured into doing that. And it's it's difficult when we talk about a guy who has come in, and although he's thrown three touchdowns, no interceptions in relief for the injured uh, Sam Carter, the sample size is extremely small for uh, for Thomas, so it, it makes it difficult. It, it, it does. The one thing that the Braves can't do, though, that you, I, I know that they're down by three scores, but to start this second half, you can't get away from what you do because what you do is what you do the best. You don't want to get out of your comfort zone uh, trying to reach for scores and reach for big plays. It's gonna, it's gonna have to, t- it's gonna be a big effort from the defense, and your offense is gonna have to just do. I mean, it, the, the Braves can score quick. That one score that they got, it was, I mean, it was a close to a twenty-yard touchdown run by Colton Thomas. So they can score quick. They just need to keep doing how what's got them there. You know, they got to do what's gotten them to this point of the season. Uh, real quick, Nick, there is a correction I need to make okay. because I made the mistake. <laughs> okay. Danville played Lucas last week in the regional semi. I looked at the bracket wrong. They're actually playing Warren JFK, who's the number one seed in Division Seven, Region 25. So from this point forward, the, score, oh. <laughs> the scoreboard will actually be correct for the second half of the game. <laughs> I'm surprised nobody uh, corrected us on that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm happy you caught that. Yeah. Uh, here I was giving Lucas all this credit and saying about, oh, you know, a 6 and 16. If they're listening at home right now, I'm sure they appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, they did. Like, great. <laughs> We're just enjoying our Saturday night. But, hey, thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that correction. And uh, no, no real other uh, updates here as we have been going through with our uh, Auto Works Collision Center scoreboard. Again, the games that uh, Indian Valley fans want to be listening to here, the two teams they – or the two games they should be focusing on if they can find a way to come from behind against Steubenville. That's Cincinnati, Wyoming, and Cincinnati Taft. Knotted up at nothing, nothing at the half, and they will be play- Indian Valley or Steubenville will be taking on the winner from that game if Glenville ultimately wins their contest. The other game they have to pay attention to, West Branch and Jefferson area. West Branch leads Jefferson area 24-13, to but they will be playing the winner of your game. You're hearing here at 99.9 FM, only if Van Wert is able to pick up the win over Glenville. Another update, Van, Van Wert leads Glenville 21-20 to at the half. Now you're all caught up again, which it's still all over the place. Again, yes. And just another reminder, you'll be able to watch the replay of tonight's Steubenville Indian Valley game on our YouTube channel. That link will be posted. Uh, we, we will share it to, the, uh, to our Facebook page. Um, that way it's easily accessible for people to, to click that and yes. watch that. Or you'll be able to just go to the YouTube channel and be able to view the replay pretty it looks like it'll probably be pretty shortly after the game concludes tonight since it's already 8 30 um well, it'll be pretty close to that 10 o'clock hour once it's all said and done i would think well that will summarize the first national bank of denison halftime report thank you again adam as always we will be sending it back out to the field with joe and travis coming up for your second half of action again steubenville leads indian valley 28 to 7 in this regional final showdown don't go anywhere big z sports brings you the second half of high school football playoff action after this when struggles seem too tough 
when sickness takes a hold, when cancer picks a fight, when baby's on its way, when life throws you a curveball. We've got you. With nearly 130 years in your backyard, Altman knows you and knows your community better than anyone. We're your neighbors, your friends, your family, and we want you to be the healthiest you can be. Altman, we are ready. We've got you. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Fall is in the air. Winter is coming. Call the propane guys at TMK Valley Propane. We make sure your home is warm and cozy all winter long. Serving your local area, we bring you the best in service. Call today. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint, digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. Tailgating season is here, so why not do it in style with a new car, truck, or SUV from Parkway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Dover. Choose a winning game plan when you bring your trade and ask about great financing options on any car, truck, or SUV on the lot. Joel and the Parkway CDJR team will help you shop and find the best deal for you. No hassle and no stress. Football season is the perfect time for a great deal, so pick a winner at Parkway Dodge Jeep Ram and Dover today. Your way, the right way. Visit ParkwayChryslerDodgeJeepRam.com and drive forward. This is Jordan Hartzler. At Hartzler's Quality Housing, our goal is to help customers achieve the dream of home ownership. We have been a family-owned, affordable housing business for over 40 years. We value our customers and have the knowledge and experience to help you walk through the home buying process from start to finish. Conveniently located just off I-77 in New Philadelphia, stop by and browse their model homes or learn more by visiting harslers.com. The First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Jeanette and Hutton, South Broadway and Shunbrunn in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Joe Geckler and Travis McClellan. Welcome back to St. Clairsville High School. We are at halftime as Steubenville leads Indian Valley 28 to 7. Uh, coming up uh, here in just a couple of minutes, the uh, opening kickoff of the second half. And uh, Travis, let's talk about the first half a little bit. Uh, Steubenville made a couple big plays on offense. Um, Indian Valley able to get on the board with a 27 yard touchdown run by Colton Thomas. Um, uh, on, after a turnover by Steubenville, but uh, Steubenville's kind of kind of dominated that first half. Yeah, you know, Indian Valley defense played well early. If you remember, Steubenville went for it on fourth and one on their own territory and right about their 30 and got it, faked the punt on the next possession, scored on both of those possessions, and uh, took control early. Indian Valley didn't give up. They pounded out. They got that big turnover here on the missed exchange, and Colton Thomas racing in the end zone for a touchdown, and Indian Valley... Uh, Scores there right right before half, about three minutes. Keeps Steubenville out of the end zone, and uh, they're going to kick off here to start the second half. So, yeah, Indian Valley will have the football, I believe, uh, to start the second half. That's and correct, we're yeah. going to head down to the sidelines and check in with Shannon Thomas. And Shannon's, uh, Shannon's uh, down, uh, crowded, uh, crowded around the heaters down there uh, on the Indian Valley sideline. Shannon, you look a little warm down there, bud. Oh, yeah, I'm nice and cozy. I was warm to begin with. I just went over there because that's where everybody's at, and I needed somebody to talk to. Oh, I got you. So uh, how many layers of clothes do you have on, Shannon? Uh, just two pairs of pants and two sweatshirts. Two pairs of pants on under your outer pants or just two total? Just two total. Two pairs of socks, two pants, two sweatshirts. <laughs> Shannon's bundled up and ready to go for a, right. uh, a cold He's second He's a veteran half. of the sidelines. Yes, show. he is. That's why he holds the strap uh, year in and year out for Big Z Sports, and, and uh, he's down there. All night long. 
Shannon, uh, in your opinion, what, what do the Braves need to do here in the second half to get back in this football game? Got to find a way to move the ball on offense. Defense, they've done some things, made some stops, but then Steubenville just goes for those fourth downs and they get it, and they got the lucky bounce on the thing. I mean, it's a very well-coached football team over there, and when you, when you catch them, you got to take advantage of it, and that's one thing the Braves haven't been able to do. The Adams board opening kickoff of the second half is going to be fielded by Colton Thomas at about the five. He's up to the ten. They're going to reverse it here to the near side, and it's going to be dropped at a just short of the 20-yard line, about the 18-yard line. That's going to be number 22, Grady Kenzie. And the Indian Valley Braves will have it first and 10 at about their own 18-yard line to start here in the second half. A little chicanery there out of the Braves. Everyone focuses on Colton Thomas. He takes the kick about, about middle of the field, rushes to the Indian Valley boundary, reverses it to Kinsey, and uh, inside out from the Big Red makes the stop, and Indian Valley's in a hole here, ball about the 23-yard line. First and 10 at the 18-yard 18 18, 18 line for Indian Valley. Again, they're going left to right on your radio dial if you're listening to us on 99.9 WTUZ. Shotgun formation, receiver here on the near side. They turn and hand it off to Gavin Henry. Cuts to the far sideline, has it to the 20. Gets dropped to the turf here at about the 21-yard line is Gavin Henry, a pickup of about three. Yeah, they run stretch to the boundary there, Joe, and number nine, Micah Mitchell there on the stop, pops his lid off and has to come out, but uh, nine in the box there by Steubenville. They were man to man on the outside here with the safety 10 yards deep, nine, nine to 10 in the box there for Big Reds. They're trying to force Indian Valley to throw the football is Steubenville. They load the box up defensively against Indian Valley. Shot, uh, quarterback under center, that's gonna be Owen Fockler now as Bercher goes in motion to the far sideline. And they're going to hand it to the first guy through. That looks like Grady Kinsey all the way up to about the 25-yard line. Going to bring up third down now for Indian Valley. Steubenville in that 40 shade. So they got a nose guard over the center, defensive end over the tackle. Covered here, the guard and the tackle on the near side. Walked the linebacker up. So it's almost like a de facto 50, Joe. They're packing that box. Third down and about three from the 25-yard line for the Indian Valley Braves. They have a receiver. And now make it two receivers here on the near side. One on the far side, Colton Thomas at quarterback with Kinsey in the backfield. Going to turn, fire it out here to Gavin Henry. Tries to make a guy miss, and there is going to be a flag from the side judge thrown. It looks like, we're, what are we going to have? Looks like it's going to be a hold against Indian Valley. I would assume they're going to decline that, Joe, but, uh, yeah, they're going to get a hold there. And uh, looking out over the uh, Big Reds defense, I don't see 32 Ostovich out there to start the second half. It doesn't look like Ostovich is out there looking for him on the sidelines here on the near sideline. Do not, does not see him. He may have a coat on. Um, a couple of the players have uh, the warm coats on. Fourth down and seven now for Indian Valley. They have it at their own 22-yard line, 10.30 to go here in the third quarter. Colton Thomas back deep to punt the football away. Brody Sukosh to punt it away, or to return the punt, excuse me. It's going to take a bounce, taking the Indian Valley bounce all the way down inside their 40-yard line to about the 38-yard line. That's where Steubenville will take over first and 10. Yeah, not a, a couple nice runs there out of the Braves. Unfortunately, couldn't pick up the first down there and had to punt it away to Steubenville. Braves' defense need to come out after this half and get a big stop here, maybe get a turnover again, help the offense. First and 10 at their own 37-yard line for Steubenville. They lead 28-7 here at St. Clairsville High School. Two receivers here on the near side, one on the far side, I formation. Phaeton Hill under center. Takes a snap, turns, and hands off to Basica. He gets stopped at the line of scrimmage and dropped. Maybe, maybe forward momentum gave him a pickup of one. And now the side judge comes in, says he Ooh. was, uh, that was a generous spot, I feel, at yeah. the, about the 39-yard line. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you there, Joe, not to chastise the officials, but that looked like a, a generous spot there. And uh, it's going to be second down and eight. Calling it second and eight now from the 39-yard line for Steubenville. Really nice job by the Braves interior there, the, the uh, D-line and the linebackers there containing the ISO there. Peyton Hill in the shotgun now. Two receivers, one on each side of the field, two backs in the backfield. They fake it. Now Hill throws to the far sideline. That's, that's, 
Isaac Hill. He's going to be dropped short of the 45 out about the 44-yard line to bring up third down for Steubenville. Yeah, they run the stick route out there and try to get the right tackle out to lead block almost kind of, sort of like a jailbreak screen. And uh, Isaac, kept, Isaac Hill kept coming inside and the pursuit from the Braves gets to him, knocks him down. They run that to the boundary, Joe. They like that little jailbreak there with the tackle going out the lead block. Third down and four now from their own 39-yard line. Again, two backs in the backfield. Hill in the shotgun. Receiver here on the near side. Phaeton Hill's going to take off running. Going to get swarmed under and sacked in the backfield. Can't tell the number. That was looks like number 83 for Indian Valley as Carlos. Nope, take that back. Looks like 63, Joe? 63, maybe. Yeah, Brent Smith. Brent Smith in on the stop. I was looking at the wrong uh, roster there. My apologies. So India Valley is going to force a punt. Hayden Hicks back deep to return or to kick the ball away to Indian Valley. Colton Thomas back deep to return the punt for the Braves. That's just the stop you needed if you're the Braves defense. Joe, you came out, couldn't get the first down, punt it away, but the defense steps up big, gets the stop, going to receive the football. See if Indian Valley can get a good return here by Colton Thomas to set something up. Trailing 28-7 here in the third quarter. Delay a game on Steubenville. Going to back him up five more yards. That's good for Indian Valley in field position. Colton Thomas was on the 30. Now he's going to move up to about the, uh, the 32 maybe. Doesn't come up too far. Gavin Hicks has been able to get a, a few good punts off here tonight for Steubenville. Fourth down and 13 now at the 43. It's going to be a high spiraling kick fielded on a fair catch by Colton Thomas at about the 36-yard line. That's where Indian Valley will take over first and 10. Yeah, excellent field position here for the Braves. Their ball, the ball is going to be on about the 36-yard line, and we'll see what they can get cooking here for the Braves offense. Commercial and Savings Bank scoreboard update. Cincinnati, Wyoming leads half 7 nothing in the third quarter. West Branch up on Jefferson area 24-19. Van Wert leads Glenville 21-20. Kirtland all over Mogador 30 to nothing. And Danville leads JFK 13-7. 7.55 to go, 28-7. Steubenville over Indian Valley. Receiver here on the near side. Now Remy Myers shifts to the far side, make it two receivers on the far side. Colton Thomas takes a snap, rolling to the far sideline. Steps back, drops, has a receiver open, and he makes the catch over on the far sideline with a flag coming in from the back judge. Looks like we're going to have pass interference against Steubenville on the play. They went a little quarter roll left there, Joe. Try to get him out over the protection over the left tackle. He throws it up for a goalder, and uh, they're going to the, get the penalty. It's going to be first down Braves. Golder was unable to come up with the completion there as he was interfered with. The officials call a pass interference against Steubenville, 15-yarder, and that's going to be enough for a first Federal Community Bank first down for the Braves. Golder was one-on-one -on, -one on the outside over there. Thomas rolled left, squared his shoulders, looped it up there, and uh, picks up the big penalty. Two receivers here on the near side, one on the far side. Shotgun again. Colton Thomas takes off now. Quarterback draw over to the far side. He's out to the 50, and he's going to get shoved out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. They're going to say the 46-yard line is where he stepped out of bounds. Now they're backing up even farther at the 47-yard line. And that's going to bring up second down and about eight for Indian Valley. Yeah, Colton Thomas takes the snap there, hits his back foot. Quarterback draw gets inside, bounces it outside, outraces the linebacker, gets to the corner. Picks up good yardage on first down. Receiver here on the near side, receiver on the far side as number one, Reese Colson jumps early, and that's going to be a false start on Indian Valley. Going to be a five-yard penalty. Why did the side judge come in here and talk to the umpire? That's, that's odd. So it's going to back them up five yards for Indian Valley, a false start against the Braves. Lots of penalties on both sides here tonight on Indian Valley and on Steubenville. Last week, if I remember right, there wasn't too many penalties uh, really on either, either side of the football no. for this game tonight, making up for that last week. Receiver here on the near side and on the far side. Now Gavin Henry comes in motion. Colton Thomas takes a snap. And he takes off, 
into Steubenville territory at about the 49-yard line, and that's going to bring up a third down for Indian Valley inside Steubenville territory. Yeah, going to be third and ten. you got to look screen draw. you got to look corner roll, maybe get Colton Thomas out on the perimeter here, try to use his legs, maybe an RPO. Third down and ten at the Steubenville 49-yard line. 28-7, Big Red over Indian Valley here in the Division IV Region 15 Championship game. Winner heads off to the state semifinals next week. Shotgun, they're going to pitch it out to Gavin Henry. Throwback pass to Colton Thomas. It's going to be picked off by Steubenville, and that's going to be a turnover for the Indian Valley Braves. Number 32, that's Ostovich. Read that and picked it off and took it right away from Colton Thomas. Yeah, he's an All-Ohioan, Joe. He stayed home, read that, went out and picked it off. He's an athlete, didn't play the first series of the second half there, was well-rested, come out, and uh, unfortunately the throwback from Henry to Thomas, uh, I understand the uh, the need to try to make a big play. Unfortunately there it's picked off, and Big Red's going to have the ball in business on about the 36-yard line. Spencer Ostovich with an interception for the Big Red. They have it now in inside Indian Valley territory, first and 10 at their 36-yard line of Indian Valley. Shotgun formation. Phaeton Hill takes a snap. Going to be a screen play right up the middle, and he is going to be dropped right at the line of scrimmage. That's going to be Jace Kernahan, and a nice play by the Braves' defense. Yeah, middle screen there to Kernahan. Braves linebackers are too quick for that, Joe. They come up and make the stop for, for a loss there, minus two. The Braves linebackers can fly. Kai John Hopkins checks back into the football game for Steubenville. Phaeton Hill still at quarterback. Nice looking quarterback for Steubenville. Bozica comes out of the game. Bozica's out. Looks like 24. Falk, Falks is in. I formation, going to turn out here and throw to Isaac Hill. Stutter steps, tries to make the guy miss. Now drags the defender and gets spun out of bounds at about the 29-yard line, or th excuse me, the 31-yard line. And it's going to bring up third down now for Steubenville. Yeah, third and about medium. Little stick route there out of him to Hill again. They like that against this cover 3D. They know he's playing seven yards off, and he just tries to out-athlete you there. Gavin Henry and Colton Thomas come out on the stop. Coming up at six minutes to go here, third quarter, 28 to seven. Steubenville leads New uh, <laughs> leads Indian Valley here in the Division Four Region 15 Championship game. Receiver to the far side, and that's Isaac Hill. Receiver now goes in motion. That's Edwards. Hand off to Folks up the middle, and he gets back to about the 30-yard line, maybe the 31. That's going to bring up fourth down yeah. for Steubenville. Quake Beatty there on the stop, and the Braves change their defense now. Justin Kaggett's at nose, and uh, Kale Coachman isn't at nose. He's out of end, so they've changed a little bit here in the second half, trying to disrupt the Big Reds' offense flow. Steubenville going for it on fourth and three. Shotgun formation, two receivers on the far side. Now make it three as Bugs goes in motion. The Indian Valley fans. One of the offsides on Brent Smith. He didn't cross the football. Or the Steubenville fans wanted that. Three receivers on the far side. The snap to Phaeton Hill. He takes off running to the 30. To the 25, there's a flag coming in. And that's probably going to be a hold on Steubenville. We'll yeah, that is going to be a hold. Spot foul. It's going to back him up from about uh, 28. So that's going to take him, take him back into, uh, it's going to be about fourth down and about. 12 or 14. Holding on Steubenville. They That's ran toss right to the boundary, leading with both fullbacks there, and uh, somebody got caught holding. It's going to bring up fourth down and long now. Let's see if they punt the football away this time. They're still in Indian Valley territory. Nope, Phaeton Hill still at quarterback, comes back out. They lead 28 to 7. Under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Huge, huge play for the Braves defense here. Got to have a stop. Fourth and 12 at the Indian Valley 38. Shotgun formation, two receivers, one on each side of the field, two backs in the backfield with Hill. Hill takes a snap, rolls here to the near side. Looking, looking, another flag comes in. It's going to be caught by Isaac Hill, shoved out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. 
but that's going to be a another another, another flag, another hold against the Steubenville Big Red. That one's going to be thrown about right about the 40, so that's going to back them up clear to the mid stripe, mid midfield stripe, Joe. Very close to going back into their own territory is Steubenville. Reno is not happy. He's about four yards out on the field, giving the White Hat the business. Coach Sukosh not happy Torres with that call. Set off. The Big Red faithful not happy as well. Now they're going to punt the football away. As the, uh, the punter Hayden Hicks checks into the ball game, Colton Thomas back deep, another flag. And that's going to be a... Uh, I Side bet that's going to be now. They've already had the warning. This so is probably gonna be a this is going to be a 15-yarder against Steubenville. This is going to be against their coaching staff. Going to be unsportsmanlike. That's 15 yards. Yeah, that's going to back them up. They're going to have to punt. The ball's at the 50. They're going to have to punt way back, Joe. They're going to punt from about their the kicker. The punter will be about his 20-yard line, maybe 21. These officials. Uh, they had it fourth down and three from about the 30, Joe, and now they're going to punt. They're going to have it. They're going to have it fourth down and uh, about. Uh, that won't be an Uber. That might be a flight. I know you might have to take a private jet to get to uh, the first down marker. As these officials are talking here, I don't know what the discussion is. They're at about the 40, 40 yard, 44 yard line. Three officials talking about the sideline judge talking to the back judge and the white hat. Not sure what the uh, delay is here. The flag sits on about the 44-yard line in Indian Valley territory. Now they're done. Now they're going to make the call. Going to have a dead ball. Okay, now they're talking about it again. The triple huddle. The triple huddle. Have a dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Steubenville. Going to back them up 15 yards. And that's still going to remain fourth down, of course, but uh, we'll see. Uh, not sure who the, the penalty was well, called on one of the coaching staff. Wasn't the ball right at the 50? The ball was right at the 50. Then it's a, they just gave him a 14-yard penalty. Yeah, the ball should have been at the 50, and it should have been taken back to the 35, if my math does me right. Yeah, 50, so that, that, 50 minus 15 is so 35. That's, that's a 14-yard penalty. Yeah, well, goes without saying. <laughs> Fourth and 33 here. Long snap back. Hicks gets the punt. Nice, nice punt. spiraling punt. Colton Thomas fields it at about the 20 yard line. Called for a fair catch. And that's where he takes it at about the 21 yard line. Nice yeah, that's going to be there. a penalty, Joe. You can't, you can't wait for a fair catch. Catch it and then run. That's deceiving the defense. And that's going to be a penalty on the Braves there. So a late flag thrown again here by one of the referee or one of the officials here. Uh, let's head, head down to the sidelines and talk with Shannon Thomas. Shannon, that happened right in front of you. I don't got you. Shannon, you hear us? I don't hear you. Looks like uh, Shannon's had a little maybe a technical difficulty with his uh, mic there, but... Uh, We'll see what happens here with, there was a penalty on Indian Valley. So they're going to have it first and 10 in their own territory. Now at the 21 yard line, lots of uh, confusing calls here and uh, all kinds of stuff for the Braves. They trail 28 to seven here at St. Clairsville High School. Joe Geckler, Travis McClellan, Shannon Thomas on the sidelines. The Braves come out now first and 10 at their own 16-yard line. Two receivers here on the near side, one on the far sideline. Thomas takes a step in the ground. Uh, Grady Kinsey takes a big shot right about the 15. And that was a big hit by Grady Kinsey. It's going to be first or second down now as the defender for Steubenville got through the line of scrimmage. And gave Grady Kinsey a shot at around the, they're calling it the 14-yard line now. Second down and 12 for Indian Valley. They trail 28-7 with 4.05 to go here in the third quarter. Shotgun formation receiver here on the near side. Two backs in the backfield. Colton Thomas takes a snap, rolling, fires over here to the near side, and that's going to be incomplete. 
intended for number 34, Brogan Bercher, and that's going to bring up third down. Yeah, he was under pressure heavy there, Joe. Had to get rid of it. Brogan Bercher was in the area. Colton smartly throws it out of bounds, lives the fight another day. Third down and 12 now from their own 14-yard line, 3.51 to go. Here in the third quarter, Steubenville leads 28-7. to seven. Division four region 15 championship game. Winner goes on to the state semifinals next Saturday. Receiver here on the near side and on the far side. Shotgun formation again, two backs. Colton Thomas takes a snap looking. Has his receiver out here. That's going to be Gavin Henry. Catches it. And oh, he loses it. Incomplete. Mm, he had it. He jump. bobbled it in and out of his hands. He catches it. He was going to be maybe off to the races as Gavin Henry has the speed. they call that a fumble, Joe? I wouldn't think so. He never had he never had control. If they call that a fumble and the officials got together and made the right call, that was an incomplete pass. Because okay. I saw the far judge throw his beanbag and mark it like it was a fumble, but uh, incomplete there. Unfortunate. Great patience there by Thomas. He looked off the safety, threw it over here, and just couldn't hang on to it was Henry. So Indian Valley goes three and out. They're going to punt the football away. Colton Thomas back to punt the football. Brody Sukosh back to return it for Steubenville. Still in his Indian Valley territory. His heels on about the 40-yard line now. Backs up a little bit more to about the 38-yard line. Thomas takes a snap. Gets it away. A high end over end kick. Going to bounce and then take a Steubenville. Bounce backwards in any Valley player there, player there to down it at about the 35-yard line. That's where Steubenville will take over. Yeah, Quake Beatty there on the, on the uh, coverage of the punt. So 3.36 to go here in the third quarter. Steubenville leads 28-7 over Indian Valley. Division four, Region 15 championship game. Joe Geckler, Travis McClellan, Shannon Thomas on the call for Big Z Sports here tonight. Big thanks to our sponsors, DAC Vitamins and Minerals, Altman Hospital, Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, TMK Valley Propane, of course, Hartzler's Quality Housing as well. Eye formation, they're going to turn and hand it off to the tailback on the in the eye, and that looks like it's going to be number that 24. Yeah, 24. 24, Joe. that's going to be Falks yep. on the carry for Steubenville. A little counter gap. They pull the tight end and the tackle from backside, and they lead up in. He follows behind him to the left side over the, t over the left tackle, and uh, the Braves defense was up to the task there. Tip your cap to the Braves defense. They played very well tonight, Joe. Indian Valley defense has played very well tonight, Travis, like you mentioned, and uh, done a nice job against his very powerful offense of Steubenville. Two receivers on the far side, Hill in the shotgun, two backs. Takes a snap, going to pump fake, and they're going to have a receiver break down the sidelines, and he's in and out of his hands, and it's going to drop incomplete. Going to bring up third down as Hill pump faked, and it was kind of a, a, a stop and go with the receiver there as he leaked out. That was Isaac Hill. Who dropped it? Gavin Henry on the coverage there, and uh, Colton Thomas did a nice job of floating over the top out of that cover three free safety, just like he should, and uh, incomplete pass. So third down and 10 from the Indian Valley 34-yard line. Two receivers here on the near side, one on the far side. That Ostovich in the backfield now with Phaeton Hill. Going to fake it. Hill's going to roll to the far sideline. Stops, fires to the near sideline to a relief. Uh, back, he lowers his shoulder out to the 25-yard line, and that's going to be enough for a first Federal Community Bank first down as the, looks like that was 24. Was that Falks again? 20, 21, Tylek Smith, or Tylek Sims, excuse me, on the reception. He kind of leaked out of the backfield a little bit, kind of a safety valve for Phaeton Hill. Yeah, Phaeton Hill tried to get the corner there, Joe. Gets pulled up short, and... Uh, he, Sims leaks out of there. He delivers the football. 2.40 to go, third quarter, 28-7. to I formation again for Steubenville. Sims goes in motion across us. Now Hill comes on the play action, looking, looking. Fires here to the near sideline. That's going to be almost oh. intercepted by Gavin Henry. If he would have caught that, he would have had a, maybe one, maybe two guys to beat down the sidelines for a touchdown, but he could not hang on to yeah, it. Yeah, it was a bit of a foot race to the end zone, Joe, and uh, the wind's picked up a little bit. 
and it hit, hit Henry between the two and the seven. Unfortunately, he couldn't come up with it there, and the, the ball falls harm harmlessly to the turf. So second down and 10 now for Steubenville. They have the ball at the Indian Valley 20-yard line just inside the Jeff Wallach LLC red zone. Big thanks to all of our sponsors this year, folks. Jeff Wallach LLC, Nathan Springer, Kaufman Realty, Parkway Quick Lane. That, of course, the post game coming up here at the conclusion of this one. It's going to be a handoff this time. That looks like Bosica, or is that Ostovich? Was that 32 in there? 23 or 32, it's one of them, Joe. It's 23 there, Bozica. Bozica on the carry for Steubenville. Going to bring up third down and about nine now for Steubenville. Steubenville went ISO there right over left guard, and uh, the Braves defense was up to the task. That linebacking core gets up there and, and fills the fullback, Joe. He's trying to ISO the fullback. They fill him in the hole, not leave him a crease, and they're able to make the stop. Third and nine now at the 19-yard line. Shotgun formation receiver on Two receivers on the far side, two backs in the backfield. They're going to fake it to Basica. Nope, Basica takes it, lowers his shoulder, stays on his feet at about the 15-yard line, and that's where he's going to be dropped. And that's going to bring up fourth down now for Steubenville. Yeah, fourth down there in field goal range. We'll see what Coach Reno decides to do, if they're going to go for it or take the point, field goal points. And it looks like the offense is staying on the field. Be fourth and five now at the 15-yard line for Steubenville. A minute 20 to go, third quarter. Steubenville leads 28-7. to seven. Indian Valley's defense, another stop here. Would get the ball back before the third quarter is over. Shotgun, two backs in the backfield, a receiver on each side of the field. Hill takes the snap, going to give it to his running back, and he is not going to get the line to gain for the fourth down, for the first down, and that's going to bring up first down and 10 now for the Indian Valley Braves, a turnover on down. Really good stop here by the Braves. They get another stop this, this quarter, Joe. They haven't given up any points in the third quarter. The Braves bent, but they did not break. They get the stop, and they're going to take over on downs right about the 12-yard line. Coming up, we'll check in with Shannon Thomas here in a couple of minutes to make sure we, uh, we get the uh, technical issues Handled here at our next break, we will take a look at our equipment and see what we need to do to make that happen. But Shannon down on the sidelines for us here tonight, 28-7 to against Steubenville leads Indian Valley. Indian Valley comes out first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Shotgun formation, Thomas takes it, going to pitch it out here to Gavin Henry. Tries to outrace one defender. Gets all the way knocked out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. And that's going to be a loss on the play of about two for Gavin Henry. Yeah, Henry took the toss to the right here, and uh, Tylek Smith, or Sims rather, was in the backfield with him. Henry was out, able to outrace him, but the uh, pursuit drill by the big red defense knocks him out of bounds for about a loss of one. Ball back to the 10. So it's going to be second down and 12 now at the 10-yard line for Indian Valley. 51 seconds to go here in the third quarter, trailing 28-7. to seven. Two receivers on the far side, one here. On the near side, shotgun with Colton Thomas. It's going to be a run pass option again. Gavin Henry catches it out to 10, to 12, to 15, all the way up to about the 17-yard line. Going to bring up third and manageable now for the Braves. What a nice play there out of the Braves. Thomas takes that snap, goes up in near the line of scrimmage, and he's got the run pass option. He's looking at the strong safety, Joe. If he comes off to stop the run, he's throwing it out to Henry. If he doesn't, he's running the football. Be third down and five now for Indian Valley at the 16-yard line. 20 seconds to go here, third quarter. Two receivers here on the near side, one on the far side, shotgun formation again. Colton Thomas takes the snap, rolling here to the near side, looking, looking, going to fire it and throw it out of play and out of bounds, incomplete. Going to bring up fourth down now for Indian Valley. Yeah, going to be fourth and five, and they're going to punt it away here before the quarter's over with 7.3 to go. He rolled right, a little two-man route, nobody open. He has to throw it away and takes a big shot there from the big red defense. So Colton Thomas does the smart thing, throws it away, avoids the sack or the turnover at worst. So it's going to bring up fourth down and five now at their own 16-yard line. Brody Sagash back to return the punt from Colton Thomas. Another high snap, going to be a low-line drive kick. Going to be fielded at about the 42-yard line. That's where 
Steubenville will take over with about two seconds to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, Steubenville going a high snap there through the timing off. Colton Thomas gets the punt off. Uh, just couldn't get a whole lot onto it with the high snap. And the Big Red's going to take over about the 38-yard line. The Sprays defense has played a spirited second half. Joe, haven't given up any points here in the third quarter. Been out there a lot in the second half so far here in the third quarter. Back out there again, two receivers here on the near side. Shotgun, Phaeton Hill with a back to his left. Hill's going to throw it out here to his, in, his receiver number 20. And that's Ty Pierce on the reception. And that's going to do it for the third quarter here at St. Clairsville. Headed to the fourth. Steubenville 28, Indian Valley 7. Back after this with Big Z Sports. Hi, this is Phil with the Ford Parkway Quick Lane Service. When the vehicle that transports your team needs maintenance, you expect it to be done accurately and quickly so you can get back on the road. Don't get sidelined by your vehicle. When it comes to servicing your team's vehicle, let my all-star team at Parkway deliver you the winning combination to keep you on the road and safe for the long haul. The Tusky Deli not only offers the lowest prices around on their deli items, but they also carry holiday gift boxes and offer made-to-order meat and cheese trays at the lowest prices around. Perfect for your upcoming holiday parties at home or at the office. Plus, you can give the gift of a Tusky Deli gift card, which makes the perfect stocking stuffer for Christmas. To see all the Tusky Deli has to offer, find them on Facebook. athletes participating this season. Now back to the field with Joe Geckler and Travis McClellan. Welcome back to St. Clairsville High School. The start of the fourth quarter, Steubenville 28, Indian Valley 7, second and 10 for Steubenville at the Indian Valley 34-yard line. Shotgun formation, the hand is to Basica up the middle, lowers his shoulder, gets down past the 30 and they're going to say that's where he went down, was about the 30-yard line. We're going to head down to the sidelines, check in with Shannon Thomas. And Shannon, man, this Indian Valley Braves defense here in the second half has really played well. Yeah, this defense has played great. They've been on the field a long time. The offense has got to find a way to go. I want to go back to the, uh, the penalty on Colton for the uh, fair catch. Colton was waiting for the fair catch. The referee never blew the whistle, so then that's why he took off, and that's why the Indian Valley coaches were fighting the case. He never blew the whistle until he threw the flag. Interesting call there. Nice uh, uh, observation there. Shannon on the penalty back in, in the uh, third quarter. Uh, we tried to go to him uh, before and uh, having some technical issues. We got him figured out there in the break. So it's going to bring up a uh, – that's enough for a first Federal Community Bank first down for Steubenville. Yeah, ISO left over the left guard there on Steubenville. Bozica picks up the first down. But number 18, Jackson Bercher absolutely laid the wood to Bozica there at the right at the first down marker and blasted him. But uh, pick up the first down, it's going to be first and 10. First and 10 at the Indian Valley 28-yard line for Steubenville. Two receivers, one on each side of the field, shotgun, two backs. Peyton Hill takes a snap, fires it over the left side. That's going to be Isaac Hill dragging a, dragging a couple defenders all the way up close to the down to the close to the ten yard line, and that's going to be enough for a first Federal Community Bank first down inside the Jeff Wallach LLC red zone. Little play action pass there, Joe. They put it in the belly like they were going to run the stretch. Hill pulls it out, looks backside. They run the slant inside cover three there to Hill. He hits him in stride, picks up good yards. It's first down and 10 at the ball at the 11-yard line. First and 10 at the 11-yard line for Steubenville. Eye formation, receiver on the far side of the field. Phaeton Hill under center. Sims goes in motion to the far side. The hand is to Basica. Breaks out of a tackle. Lowers his shoulder. Gets shoved out of bounds on the far sideline at around the six yard, around the four yard line inside the five. And that's where Steubenville will have its second down now and about three. Steubenville this time runs stretched to the boundary and the fullback leads. Uh, tailback gets the football right off the left tackle there. Joe bounces it out to the outside and uh, picks up seven there on first down. Second down and three from the Indian Valley four-yard line. They can get another first down before they would score for Steubenville. Eye formation, turn and hand off to Basica. He gets dropped right at the line of scrimmage and uh, going to be no gain. Bring up third down for the Big Red. 
Looked like uh, 52 there, Kale Coachman, and uh, no, 54, Justin Kegget there on the stop for the Braves there in the middle. Third down. I think he lost about a yard. Third down and three. Calling it third and three at the four-yard line. Can get a first down inside the one. Or at the one for Steubenville. Triple stacked eye. What we call the diesel package out at Garraway. They have the eye formation now. Back goes in motion to the far side. Turns and hands. That's going to be Ostovich. Another penalty flag flies in. That's going to be a touchdown unless it gets called back. Let's see what the uh, – looks like it's going to be a hold on Steubenville. So that's going to back him up 10 yards. Yeah, umpire was looking backside there, and uh, he was specifically looking. It looked like the right guard or right tackle held. He threw that flag in a hurry, Joe, and uh, they're going to back him up 10. 10-yard 10 penalty on the run there by Ostovich. Negates the touchdown, so now they're going to have it third down and about 13 from the 14-yard line. Ostovich, like you said, all Ohioan last year for the Big Red. Comes out of the ball game now. Shotgun formation, one back in the backfield, two receivers here on the near side, one on the far side now. The one on the far side comes in motion, goes back. It's going to be a throwback here. Two bugs into the end zone. Touchdown, Steubenville from 14 yards out. And it's now 34-7, to Steubenville. Little swing pass there to Ivan Bugs, and he gets the corner, runs into the end zone for the touchdown for Big Red. Bugs turns on the wheels there as he turns the corner and gets into the end zone just before getting touched by an Indian Valley defender. But it gets into the end zone for the touchdown, 34 to seven now, Steubenville. Looks like Cole Bowers now on for the extra point. Nope, we're gonna have a different kicker in the ball game. That's not Bowers, Bowers is a left-footed kicker. This guy's a right-footed kicker. Not sure of the number, can you check the number for me, Trav? Can yeah, see I'm it? trying to see, buddy. It is 80, 80. 84, that's the punter, That's Joe. the punter, Hayden Hicks, on for the extra point. I uh, don't see number 41 on the sidelines. Where is he at here? Um, Cole Bowers is typically their kicker on extra points and field goals. I don't see him here on the sidelines. Wonder if uh, he's shaking up or just giving Hicks some opportunity to kick an extra point. Yeah, 41's right here, Joe, about the 50. He looks okay. They must just must be giving... Uh, Giving Hicks a chance. Snap the hold, the kick. It is up, and it is good for Steubenville, and they now lead 35-7, 9.22 to go here in the football game. Timeout on the field. We'll take it with them. A Kaufman Realty timeout. Back after this with Big Z Sports. 99.9. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. St. Clairsville High School as a commercial and savings bank scoreboard update for you. Wyoming knocks off Taft and Cincinnati 7 to nothing. West Branch beating Jefferson area 37-34 in a third. Glenville leads Van Wert 28-27. Kirtland up are they knocked off Mogador 30 to nothing and Danville leads Warren JFK 21-14 in the fourth. Here we have 35 to 7. Steubenville leads Indian Valley with 9.22 to go in the football game. Steubenville scored on a 14-yard touchdown pass to Ivan Bugs just a moment ago. The Adams board kickoff is going to be fielded by Gavin Henry. Takes a bounce and he retreats back to about the five-yard line, picks it up, and then he gets dropped at about the 15-yard line. That took a Steubenville bounce on the kickoff. Yeah, tackled by number 27, Cale Simmons, the sophomore, up to make the stop. It took a little funny bounce there. Gavin retreats and picks it up on the high hop and gets what he can. 
First and 10 now at the 16-yard line of Indian Valley. The Braves trailing 35-7. to Got to make something happen here quick, Travis. Yeah, they're going to have to uh, get the ball down the field here in a hurry. 35-7 with 9.16 to go. And uh, looks like a timeout on the field, Joe. Looks like a timeout. We'll keep it right here and uh, head down to the sidelines and talk with Shannon Thomas. And Shannon on that 14-yard uh, touchdown, they threw it out to Ivan Bugs on a swing and he just turned on the afterburners and uh, got into the end zone. Yeah, a nice little play for him right there. And I thought he was going to probably try to run power inside. Nice little swing pass to the outside, and Gavin Henry just couldn't quite get the angle in that short distance. What's your opinion on the offense here uh, to start this drive, trailing 35-7? Uh, quick strike attack probably for Indian Valley what they need. Yeah, you, they, they made some big plays the last time. You know, they had to drop pass, and then, it just was out of position on one of their stops where uh, Grady Kenzie, somebody missed their assignment when he got blowed up in the backfield. Offensively, they just got to find a way to move the ball right here. Defensively, they've played great this half. You know, it's only a 7 nothing game here in the second half, but that first half of football killed them. So Indian Valley now has it uh, first and 10 at their own 16-yard line. That trip to the sidelines brought to you by Dr. Nathan Springer. Two receivers on the far side of the field. Colton Thomas in the shot in the pistol formation with Kenzie behind him. Kenzie takes the handoff, puts the ball on the turf, and it's going to be recovered by Steubenville. Another turnover for the Indian Valley Braves. This time, Grady Kenzie puts it on the turf. Yeah, he got hit there and uh, put it on the turf. And, you know, unfortunately, he got hit pretty hard from the side. Coughs up the football. It's going to be big red football. And they're in business right about their 22-yard line. So 9-11 to go here in the football game. Steubenville takes over again, leading 35-7. to Let's see if uh, Steubenville has their first team in. A couple numbers in there I don't recognize. Let's see who the quarterback is. Could be number 14, Aiden Manning. Manning brother uh, out there, that quarterback for Steubenville. Eye formation now, Manning under center, the Backups are in for Steubenville. Manning turns and hands to the first Ooh. guy through and takes a big shot. Couple of Indian Valley defenders drives him to the turf. Looks like number number 60, Braden Parsons, blew him up. Braden Parsons with a big hit for the Indian Valley Braves defense. Second down now for Steubenville. 8.50, 8.45 to go here in the football game. Cold night of football here in St. Clairsville. I believe the kickoff temperature at kickoff was about 25. It, it felt like cold. it was. It felt like it was in the teens down on the field. I formation, receiver on the far sideline turns, hands off. Another stop by the Indian Valley defense. That's going to bring up second down now and maybe six. Yeah, second down and six or seven. Or third Joe. down and six. Yeah, maybe. third down rather. Eight minutes. It's going to be eight fifteen here on a running clock and. Uh, Big Red's got to start, or I'm sorry, the Indian Valley Braves got to start ripping at the football here, Joe. They're playing very physical. Like we've talked about, the defense have played rock solid this half, but they got to start ripping at the football here with eight minutes to go. So third down and eight at the Indian Valley 19-yard line inside the Jeff Wallach LLC red zone. High formation, receiver split to the far side. Manning takes a snap, turns, hands off to his back, and his back's going to get dropped right at the line of scrimmage. It was that number 28, Jalen Minifield, and the Indian Valley Braves stop him maybe for a one-yard gain, half-yard gain. Going to bring up fourth down now for the Big Red, 7.30 to go in the game. Yeah, the middle of that Braves defense is absolutely rock solid. Can't get there at the nose. Parsons, uh, Quake Beatty at the uh, other middle linebacker. They're just playing rock solid in there along with uh, number 52, uh, Kale Coachman in there playing real well as well. Two receivers here on the near side, one on the far side. Manning at quarterback, back in the backfield. Turns and hands. Nope, going to be a play action pass. Manning, and that's going to be an incomplete pass as both receivers were going for, or both uh, players going for the football. And I believe they were both diving for the football. I don't see any interference there by number 32, Remington Myers. Yeah, Remy Myers there on the coverage there. He was behind the line of scrimmage there, and they got tangled up. 
and uh, it's going to be a turnover on down, Braves football. Head down to the sideline, Shannon Thomas, that play happened right in front of you. I didn't see any harm in that play by Remy Myers. No, the, the, the ball was right at the line of scrimmage, the receiver and stuff, they both went for it, and I just think because he was at the line of scrimmage, there's not going to be a pass interference call. So a nice play there by Remy Myers. The Indian Valley Braves get the football back, trailing 35-7, seven, seven minutes to go here in the football game. I formation, looks like Faulkner at quarterback, turns and hands off. That's going to be Gavin Henry. Stretches it out to the far sideline, gets out to about the 15-yard line. They say he went out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Lawson Lewis, number 29, on the stop for the Braves. Oh, I'm sorry, the Big Reds. Going to be a loss of about four on the play. He brings up second down now and about 14. Yeah, bounce, he, he tried to bounce it out wide there and uh, couldn't quite get the corner. Could the Braves running back? Second down for Indian Valley now. 6.24 to go here in the game. Trailing 35-7 to to Steubenville. Eye formation, a power eye formation. Looks like the ball got put on the turf again. There's a scrum for it. Let's see who has the football back. And uh, there looks like there was a fumble. And it is uh, Steubenville football as they come away with it. Yet another turnover, number 14, Aiden Manning. The defensive back slash quarterback picked up the loose ball on the turf and recovered it for a Steubenville first down. Yeah, it looked like a missed exchange there. And... Uh Faulkner put the, put the football on the turf. There was a scrum for it there, and it popped out there late, and Manning was right there waiting by the pile, saw it pop out, dove on it. They're going to be their football right on the 12-yard line. So it's going to be first and 10 now for Steubenville inside the Jeff Wallach LLC red zone. High formation receiver here on the near side. Manning under center. Receiver goes in motion here to the near side. The handoff here, misses out of a tackle and into the end zone, number 28, Jalen Minifield for another touchdown for the Steubenville Big Red. Number 24, Quake, Qu Beatty. Quake Beatty limping off the far sidelines. But it was a touchdown run from 18 yards out for Jalen Minifield. 5'9", 160-pounder for the Big Red. 41-7 now. Steubenville leads Indian Valley. A timeout on the field taken by Steubenville, and we'll keep it right here and uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Indian Valley season. You know, they have had a, uh, a remarkable season. We've seen them a couple times here, Travis, and Saw them last week in the playoffs, and we saw them this week, and we saw them during the regular season. And uh, not many people gave them a big, big, very big chance, and, and says, "Oh, they don't, they don't belong this far in the playoffs." But the way they've been playing the last four or five weeks, they've really improved as a team. They've had a phenomenal season. Oh, unbelievable! Ten and season. three, four and one in the IVC. They lost to Dover, a Division Two team. They lost to Garraway. And um, uh, I can't remember their third loss there, but... Uh, Ridgewood. Ridgewood. No, yeah, no, they beat Ridgewood. No, uh, um, Dover, Garraway, and... Uh, Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Out of D.C. That so that was their three quarterback out of D.C., yeah. Yeah, and, and so they've had a remarkable season. Looks like uh, Steubenville is just going to take a knee here on the extra point attempt. Uh, and that's exactly what they do is they take a knee... And that's going to be uh, no good, of course, 41-7. to seven. Now the clock is going to be running here in the second half. It's over 30 points. But Indian Valley has had a remarkable season. They've had uh, some, some great wins here along the way, knocking off Bishop Reedy last week. And uh, everybody that doubted this Indian Valley team, uh, it's, it's, it's remarkable to see what they have done. Yeah, they play well together. They play hard, Joe. They play hard. They fly to the football defense. They're fast. They, they got quick uh, linemen. They're not overly big. They don't have that 6'8", 270 guy, but they're quick to the football. They play with discipline. They get outside. They hustle to the football. They play hard. And, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, their season is going to come to an end. And uh, But at 10-4, at and four, making it to the Elite Eight, nothing to hang your hat about. These Braves and, and Brave Nation have a ton to be proud of. Losing some key names, Gavin Henry. Remy Myers, Brogan Bercher, Daniel Miller, 
Daniel Miller, Kale Coachman, Braden Parsons, Eth uh, Easton Cook, um, Reese Colson, Gio Lopez, but they have a ton of talent coming back, inc talent. including number seven, Colton Thomas. You're going to have Grady Kinsey back. Uh, you're going to have a lot of talent coming back on this team next year. Sam Carter's back when healthy. Sam Carter's back next year as well. But they also have a really, really Clay good. Beatty's back. Really good incoming freshman class um, next season. And ball's going to be fielded by the up man at around the 30-yard line. That's Grady Kenzie, and that's where the Braves will take over after the Adams board kickoff. Yeah, Kenzie dropped the football there but was able to jump on it. And, uh, you know, getting back to the Braves, they do have a lot coming back. And a lot of guys played. Uh, they were young coming in. They have a lot that played. And, uh, you know, you talked about that class coming in. there. There's high hopes here in, in Janet and Hutton. There's a kid uh, you want to keep your eye out for next season for the Indian Valley Braves, Riker Williams. He'll be a freshman. Um, he is the younger brother of one Cade Williams, if you remember Cade from the Indian Valley run from a few years ago. It's his little, little brother. A toss here to the near side to Gavin Henry. Gets out up past the 35 to about the 38-yard line. That's going to bring up second down for Indian Valley. Head down to the sidelines and talk with Shannon Thomas. And Shannon, talk. Uh, you've been around this program now for seven years. Uh, talk about this senior class for the Braves. Yeah, it's an outstanding senior class right here. It was a small senior class, but guys like Remy Myers, Braden Parsons, Kale Coachman, those guys are program kids. They they've played through everything. A lot of them played when they were young. You know, Kale Coachman had a he had a couple injuries early on in his career, but. You know, I was proud of the way that he came back a senior leader. Remy Myers is just a great senior leader. Braden Parsons switched positions this year. Never played the line before, took over at the line. As uh, Colton Thomas going to keep it here to the near side, takes a big hit around the 44-yard line, and that's going to be enough for a first Federal Community Bank first down. Now, Shannon, talk about uh, the kids coming back uh, that this program has to build on. Yeah, they have a lot of talent coming back. You know, on the defensive side, Jackson Bircher and Quake Beatty, two quick names that come to mind. You know, two outstanding linebackers. Uh, they'll have Cole Steven back. Uh, I lose the names here. Cam Gusman will be back. Those guys are phenomenal defensive players. Colt Thomas will be back at the safety spot. And you'll have on the offensive side, you'll have the, fre the freshman, Grady Kins, who will only be a sophomore next year. Colton Thomas will be back. Sam Carter, you know, he'll, he's got a long recovery, but he'll be back. So. A lot of young kids coming back. Got a lot of kids coming up, like Joe said, so it'll be interesting to see what this program does the next three years. Colton, Colton takes a snap now, breaks out of a tackle, and then it gets drugged down behind the line of scrimmage. Back around the 40, about the 47-yard line, or I'm sorry, the 44, 43-yard line for Colton Thomas. Kale Simmons, or Simons, on the stop for Steubenville. And a running clock coming up on three minutes to go here in the ball game and the season for the Indian Valley Braves. They trail 41 to seven to Steubenville. Steubenville will move on and take on the, uh, I believe, the winner of the Glenville Van the Wert game. game. And uh, we'll see who comes out on top. Last I saw, Glenville was winning that game, and it's going to be a handoff to Gavin Henry, and he gets back to maybe the line of scrimmage as Kale Simons on the stop again for the Big Red. Yeah, Kale Simons in on the stop there on Henry. It's going to be third and about 12, Joe, here on a two, two minutes and 30 second moving clock. Third down and about 12 for Indian Valley now, trailing 41 to 7. Last update I got, Glenville 34-27 over Van Wert. So we have it third and 12 now at their own 47-yard line. I formation going to hand it off to Kinsey off the right side. Makes one guy miss and gets out above the 45 to about the 47-yard line. Going to bring up fourth down now as we have an injured player down for the Indian Valley Braves. Let's see if we can pick up a number. As he is, his teammates help him back up. And That's 52, Joe. 52 for the Indian Valley Braves. That's, That's going to be Kale Coachman. Uh, hobbles off with the help of his teammates. It is fourth down now and eight for 
the Indian Valley Braves. You hate to see that out of anybody, but especially the senior, Joe. He's limping hard on that right leg. So a minute 47 to go here in the game and in the season for Indian Valley. Going to finish the season at 10 and 4 for the Braves. I formation, Faulkner under center, the misdirection handoff, and he is going to be dropped in the backfield. That was number 34, Brogan Bercher, and that will be a turnover on downs for Indian Valley, and Steubenville will take over with a minute 30 to go here in the football game. Number 54, Noah West on the stop, the defensive end, the sophomore for uh, Steubenville. They're going to take over. Probably a couple knees here, Joe, and that'll be all. So big, big thanks to all of our sponsors here for Big Z Sports in 2022 for the football season. DAC Vitamins and Minerals, Altman Hospital, Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, TMK Valley Propane, of course, Hartzler's Quality Housing, the Adams Board, First Federal Community Bank, Jeff Wallach, LLC, Dr. Nathan Springer, Kaufman Realty, First National Bank of Denison, Parkway Quick Lane. The post game's coming up here in just a moment. And, of course, Mac and Turf as well. Chocolate milk all season provided by the Tuscarawas County Dairy Farmers and Jackie P. Photography. I miss that chocolate milk, Joe, after games, that ice-cold chocolate milk coming out of the cooler. I miss that. And, uh, a little cold to drink it tonight, though. No, never too cold for chocolate <laughs> milk. It'll, it'll be a little chilly tonight to drink that. And, of course, a minute 30 to go here in the game. Big thanks to uh, all of our stringers this year. Uh, everybody has done a nice job. We've added some teams this year, uh, the Fairless Falcons, the Malvern Hornets, all to our coverage, and uh, all of our stringers have done a nice job uh, with the coverage that Big Z Sports provides each and every week as they're going to turn and hand the football off. And that looks like it was number uh, 18. Number 18. That was Eric Williams on the carry. Going to bring up second down, clock moving. Coming up on about a minute. So uh, for some reason, coming up on about a minute to go in the game. Big thanks to, again, like I said, all of our stringers, all of our sponsors. We couldn't do what we do with Big Z Sports without you and our sponsors. Of course, our listeners, our viewers on our stream, Casey Claxon and his crew with Claxon Communications. Again, another handoff up the middle. That's going to bring up third down now. Coming up on 40 seconds to go in the ball game. Steubenville 41, Indian Valley 7. That should be the last play there, Joe. If they don't, oh, nope, they said it already. They started the 40-second play clock a little early, so they'll, we'll have to take one more snap. One more snap here in the season for Indian Valley, but... Uh, of course, the Claxton Communications crew did a great job, as always, all season long. Looking forward to um, basketball season. That's coming up here the beginning of December. Of course, our wrap-up show for Big Z Sports is going to be on Tuesday, November, is that the 29th, I believe? Um, so the 29th will be our season wrap-up show from the Point Dining in New Philadelphia and uh, we'll have all the coaches there and uh, hand out our player of the year and defensive player of the year and uh, all of our awards, our coach of the year as well. But we have a final score here at St. Clairsville as Steubenville moves on 41-7 to over Indian Valley, and that is the final score. Take a quick break, come back, wrap this up. You're listening to Big Z Sports right here on Z Country 99.9. Top Notch Auto on East Plum Alley in Janaden, your one-stop shop for all your vehicle needs. Offering an experienced staff that can handle just what you need to keep your vehicle running at its best. Top Notch Auto specializes in diagnostics with state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment. Whether your vehicle needs routine maintenance or major repairs, Top Notch Auto can handle all your vehicle needs. They also offer a large selection of tire brands, including Goodyear, Kelly, and Cooper, just to name a few. Find Top Notch Auto LLC on Facebook or call them at 740-561-4100. Planning your next vacation or home improvement project and worried about managing expenses? CSB can help with that. Setting a goal is the first step to achieving your vision, and CSB's Money Manager tool helps you get started. Whether you are recovering from Christmas spending or preparing to send kids to college, the Personal Financial Management tool helps you set goals, track your spending, and monitor your progress. Money Manager is available within CSB's online banking. Check it out today. The Commercial and Savings Bank member, FDIC. 
Dr. Nathan Springer is in the business of making smiles, specializing in braces and Invisalign for children and adults. Dr. Springer provides smiles that can be recognized anywhere. Just look at the winning smile on some of the players. Compliments of Dr. Nathan Springer Orthodontics. Hey, that smile of pride on the face of mom and dad might be from Dr. Springer, too. Dr. Nathan Springer Orthodontics in the business of making smiles at 107 Ray Avenue Northeast in New Philadelphia. Make your dream home a reality with Designer Stone Company in Port Washington. They offer granite and quartz countertops custom made to fit your home. Explore Designer Showroom to discover the possibilities for your new kitchen or bath. The Designer Stone Company is on Facebook and conveniently located on State Route 36 in Port Washington. Valley to end their season 41 to 7. Going to head down to the sidelines and talk with Shannon Thomas. And Shannon, uh, your final thoughts on this Indian Valley season, this Indian Valley game, and uh, what uh, what you're going to take away from this team as you followed them uh, through everything this season. Uh, one thing I'll take away from this, this team is uh, they did what they're always coached to do, next man up. They had a lot of injuries this year. They all fought through them. They rallied as a team. They played together like a family, and they, they, they've had a successful season. I know right now they don't want to hear that because they just lost a game. And that's how you know competitors are when competitors lose. They don't like that feeling. So they'll, uh, they'll hit the weight room, make some adjustments this winter, and they'll get back at it. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, uh, the seniors, uh, again, you followed them all the way through from freshmen all the way through this game here tonight. And uh, it's going to be a, a group that's going to be missed for sure. Yeah, you know, there, there's a lot of good seniors on this football team, Gavin, Henry, Kale Cushman, Remy Myers, Brayden Parsons. You know, I could go on and on about these seniors. They were just they were just playing Pop Warner football when I started following this program. They were the kids standing on the sideline high-fiving these guys after games, and they've had, they've had a great career here at Indian Valley. You know, they come up a little short tonight, and like I said, they don't want to hear that right now, but I'll get to watch them in the, their other sports here the next couple seasons, and, uh, you know, that's, that's special class. Shannon, as always, man, uh, great job all season. Uh, we appreciate you. I appreciate you. And uh, I know Big Z Sports is uh, so thrilled to have you along for this ride. Daniel uh, Daniel Adams does a nice job as well. But, Shannon, uh, thanks for everything, man. Uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, looking forward to uh, visiting Dover, uh, hang out with Travis. Everybody. Well, I guess Travis has got to come to Indian Valley next year. So Travis can hang out with me down in Indian Valley next year for the Indian Valley Dover game. And, it was a fun ride with Travis here these last couple of years, and uh, keep that rocking chair warm beside you, buddy, because I might be there in a couple of years. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. Appreciate you, brother. You're the best down there. Thanks, buddy. That's Shannon Thomas on the sidelines uh, one final time here for Big Z Sports, and uh, Steubenville got the trophy. They're running over to share it with their fans now as Indian Valley uh, received their runner-up trophy as well in the regional semi or regional finals here at St. Clairsville, but uh, Reno has something uh, special here, man. 39 years of, uh, of doing it. You know, they don't do anything fancy, Joe, but they just do what they do, and they do it really well. They run the football, and everyone talks about the athletes. You talk about, you know, Bozica and Spencer Ostovich and Isaac Hill and, and, and uh, the Hill, the quarterback there. And, but you know what? Their offense and defensive line leads this team. They did it again tonight, and uh, they get the big win. They're going to move on to the Final Four. Well, uh, we'll uh – We'll call it a, a, a career together here in the uh, in the booth as uh, you're going to move on to uh, to watch your son. Go which, be a dad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I appreciate it, brother. Uh, you know, I came into this six years ago and uh, really built a lot of friendships and, uh, you know, keep a seat beside me warm. I'm not, not really going anywhere. I'm just going to go uh, be a dad and for the first time sit in the stands and uh, – I can't Ooh. wait to see what Noah does. Yeah, you know, it's going to be fun, and hopefully we can give him some awards. Yeah. you know, over the next few years, and uh, of course, uh, going to be a sophomore at Dover next year, and that's why Travis is stepping away. Which, if my son was doing that, yeah. I'd do the same exact gonna, thing. Uh, so you know, I'm going to be around for a couple basketball games. Hey, but uh, we, we may sneak you into the broadcast <laughs> next year down at Indian Valley, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll get you, you know, in for and, one. Um, you know, like I said, I can't thank the people here enough. I'm not going anywhere. Still flying the TUZ red, white, and blue, and uh, you know, it, it's not 
goodbye and see you later. Sure. And, uh, you know, so proud of what we've done here. we got a great crew. You know, we say if it's a big game, we're there, and there's only one, and that's us. And uh, proud to be a, a very small part of that. And, you know, got to thank my, my family for allowing me to do this and sure. being away. And, and I'm looking forward. Hopefully I can make it to the postgame show. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's coming up on Tuesday the 30th, I believe, uh, if I've got the date correct uh, there. It's uh, Tuesday after next. How about that? Uh, see, tomorrow's the 20th, 21st. Yeah, the, 29th. Yeah, the 29th, actually. Yep. Uh, Tuesday the 29th uh, for our wrap-up show. Wrap and, up uh, show. Yep. you know, I, I'm losing a color analyst uh, here in the booth, but I know I'm not losing a friend. Absolutely not. Never. And, uh you know, I'll still be around. So, oh, yeah, for know. sure. And uh, I appreciate you. You've appreciate taught me you. a lot about the game over the last four years here in the booth with me. And uh, I, you've made me a better broadcaster, and uh, I, appreciate I appreciate that. It. Not a higher honor for me to be up here with you. Thank you. So, uh, again, big thanks to everybody involved with Big Z Sports. Uh, Lydia Brady, um, always great. She does a great job for us. And uh, Claxton Communications crew all season long. The guys in the studio tonight, Nick. McWilliams and Adam Soeski. One final time, Steubenville moves on to the state semifinals with a 41-7 win over Indian Valley. For Shannon Thomas, Lydia Brady, Nick McWilliams, Adam Soeski, Chris Kale, and the whole Big Z Sports crew. And for Travis McClellan, I'm Joe Geckler saying Thanks for listening to Big Z Sports. Tonight's show was presented by Parkway Chrysler. Thanks for listening to Big Z Sports. Today's game was presented by Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, DAC Vitamins and Minerals, TMK Valley Propane, Altman Hospital, Battle Motors, Parkway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, First National Bank of Denison, Hartzler's Quality Housing, Wood Electric, Parkway Quick Lane, and Keim Home Center. Follow Big Z Sports on Facebook, on Twitter, at Big underscore Z Sports, and on Instagram. Thank you for listening to Big Z Sports on 99.9 WTUZ, Z Country.